in a world where Carolina Panthers fans have an insatiable thirst for Panthers news and opinions. Only one podcast roars ferociously. It's the C3 Panthers podcast. Three, what's up? The C3 podcast Friday free for all is back at you with the fifth volume. Listen, you already know what this show is. If you don't, but well, now you do. It's your show. If you're a Panther fan and you want to come talk about some Panther football, but this is the place to do it. I'm going to be posting the link in the description and in the chat box. And anybody who wants to come in and talk Panther football is more than invited to do so. I am your host, Cody Lashley, uh, and I want to introduce my uh, my fellow compatriots that have joined me thus far. Uh, my co-host, Nick Montiero, who has joined me for every podcast, every Friday free for all. What's up, bro? What's up, man? How you doing, Cody? It's good to be here. Oh, I'm pumped, dude. Hey, it's, it's Panthers training camp is underway. I mean, what could be wrong right now? It's like that's all I really need to put a smile on my face. Just one step closer to opening day, my friend. Just one step closer. 100%. This next guy is a legend of the cat calls. He goes by the name of Supreme Lito. What's up, brother? What's good? C3, what's good? Um, I jazzed up my background a little bit for y'all, especially All for right. Cody right here. So I see you. I see yeah. you. I, I, I appreciate that, man. I love seeing Cam Newton's jersey no matter what, no matter when, to the end of time, bro. So sure, that yeah. works out for me, man. Zach Altman is joining us once again. Zach, what's going on, bro? Uh, oh, your, microphone might, your microphone might be muted. Either that or your audio is... Sorry happening. about that. Sorry no, you're good. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, yeah, we're we're so close. We got what uh, two, like two and a half weeks to our first preseason game. Yeah, so it, it's it's coming close, man. It's Can't come any sooner. Definitely coming close. Um, and, and, dude, there's so much stuff happening at training camp. There's so much stuff to talk about. We got one more person to welcome to the podcast. He's a South Carolina fan, but you know what? I think pretty pretty highly of him anyway. It's Kevin Boshoven. Kevin, what's up with you, brother? Yeah. What's happening, man? Dude, okay. I'm doing good, man. Hey, like I told Nick, if Panthers football is around the corner, then I'm happy <laughs> as hell, bro. So listen, yes. um, if you haven't already, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe. Uh, we go live every single Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Uh, for the Tuesday edition of the C3 Carolina Cat Chronicles podcast. And today's show, Friday Free For All, where today is about all of you. So we're going to go ahead and jump into this. Um, so I'm going to pass this around a little bit. We have a few things on the docket tonight, and then I'll let you guys kind of take the show uh, in whatever direction you want to talk about. Uh, this news keeps on coming up with one Kelvin Benjamin. And I wanted to... Uh, to kind of speak my piece on this. AJ Lindsay, what's up? Welcome to the stream, brother. What's going on, guys? How you doing tonight? Dude, I'm happy you could join us, man. Mm -hmm. So uh, listen, Absolutely. I wanted, I wanted to lead off and uh, kind of give my opinion on the whole Kelvin Benjamin situation. Uh, I'm sure you've seen the thumbnail. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I love to, I love to poke, uh, poke fun uh, of Kelvin Benjamin, and it's for a reason, and I know people have been talking about this, so I wanted to open up the discussion. Uh, you know, so for those of you who are out of the loop and don't know what's happened, uh, Kelvin Benjamin uh, got a chance to rejuvenate his career with the New York football giants. He was given a chance by former Panther GM Dave Gettleman. Um, and let's just say he has flushed yet another opportunity down the drain, man. And, uh, you know, Kelvin Benjamin was given, frankly, another opportunity of football when I don't even necessarily think you can say that he deserved one, but again, yeah. that's weird. Who am I to say who deserves what? Um, but a lot of people, the reason I wanted to talk about this specifically uh, is because I've noticed there's been a lot of people who are, you know, they feel bad for Kelvin Benjamin. And listen, I don't feel happy about so another man's downfall. Uh, th that's kind of petty to me. But I I'm a firm believer that in life, your actions have consequences. And if you continue to do things that derail your career time and time again, after people continuously 
try and give you a chance to be a professional NFL football player. Like, how many people get that opportunity in a lifetime? And, and then Kelvin Benjamin continues to come out and squander opportunity after opportunity. I don't wish this man any ill will, but I, I, I'm not down with this sentiment of, uh, you know, to feel bad for Kelvin Benjamin. He's got stuff going on. Bro, life is hard sometimes. Everybody's got yeah. stuff going on. It, you know, you have to deal with the consequences of your own actions. But um, I'll let you guys jump on this. Who wants to uh, talk first? Well, I mean, well, this, I'll, this I'll, is... Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right, Nick, go ahead. You got it. All right. So this is what, his third chance, you know, to play ball? You know, <laughs> first with the Panthers that I can think of. I mean, I know he's probably floated around to a couple different teams, uh, but I can't... F- Fourth, he uh, uh, Carolina Panthers, Buffalo Bills. He had a very brief stint with the Kansas City Chiefs, uh, yeah. and then and then yeah. So now this is number four, for, and uh, the XFL Kelvin. too. <laughs> was he, he was in the in XFL? The X- no, I didn't know he was in the XFL. Next year he was. I'm gonna look that up right now, but I mean he's got he's gotten plenty of chances. Will be when it restarts. Is the yeah. XFL still a thing? Like no. that's yeah. It will be. Well, it will be, but it's not right now. Yeah, didn't the Rock buy it or something like that? Yeah, yeah. fifteen mil. Wow. All right. So, hey, yeah, maybe he'll get another chance in the uh, in the XFL. I did read an article where he basically says he doesn't uh, intend to play football anymore. Which I don't even know why you would get up for this. The Giants asked him to weigh two hundred and fifty-one pounds, and he <laughs> came in. At 268 pounds. Jesus. Like, bro, at that point, you might as well play linebacker, dude. Yeah, or right. fucking uh, offensive tackle. Yeah. I don't know. I don't understand this. I'll let, I'll let uh, whoever wants to jump in on this. Uh, before we well, do that, let, let me uh, let me add uh, Dexter. What's going on, bro? Hey, thanks for having me. It's good to be yeah. here. Yeah, man. Happy you could join. And as always, you know him. You love him. Team Money. Team Money. What's up, bro? What's up with you? Tell them, man. We, uh, we're talking Kelvin Benjamin. So I kind of said my piece. Uh, you know, I don't wish that man any, any ill will, but at the same time, I wish him no harm. Uh, do any of you have any uh, thoughts on uh, Kelvin Benjamin before we move on to the Panthers training camp? Well, I'm sorry. I don't feel bad for Kelvin at all. I mean, you really have to take some personal responsibility. You're an NFL player. They pay, they pay you to play football. The coach says, I want you to come into camp at 251 pounds. That's your job. When my boss tells me that I need to have something done by a certain time, I want to keep my job. I get what I need to get done. They tell you to come in at 251 pounds. Stop going to Bojangles. (laughs) Run a couple extra laps. Drink some water and come in at 251 pounds. Right. It's plain and simple. Put down the bowberry biscuits and go to work. Them shits are so good, though. They really oh. are. <laughs> they really hey, are, man. Hey, I'm up here in Maine. They don't have Bojangles, and I miss it so much, so I don't even want to get on that. <laughs> tough. That's tough. And I think yeah, that I, I think a lot of it, too, was it probably was a gentleman giving him a chance. So, I mean, if Joe Judge already didn't really want him, then you're going to give him a weight goal that you know he's not going to hit. I mean... Can curse him out, like Joe Judge? Yeah, and see, this is one of the things I'm learning. That was uh, kind of appar- yeah, yeah, apparently the Giants fans or Giants players love Joe Judge. And now the players are going to bat for Joe Judge after this. Because then... and see, I'm, I'm not doing a good enough job of being forthright with all the information but Kelvin Benjamin then went on to do an interview later that night where he was throwing mm-hmm. all of the Giants under the bus saying that Joe Judge never gave him a chance he was always um, you know they were bringing him in just to make a joke of him and like well, that's I would always- have been done with Joe Judge when uh, when he first came in and remember he was making everybody run mm-hmm. the coaches yeah. and everybody yeah did he get cut before he, he went to training camp, or was it during? It was the first day of uh, training camp. So he didn't even make it to training no, camp? No, he was walking onto the training camp. 
And they told him, put them out for there. So, Joe Judge I mean, if said, you believe hey. Kelvin, his whole thing was he passed the conditioning test. Yeah, he says that he passed his conditioning test and that uh, he, that, that would have been a lighter tight end than what he played at receiver. He even said that he was two, uh, 265 mm-hmm. playing receiver. Which Dude, is crazy. What, that, have you ever heard of a 260-plus pound receiver like being effective in the NFL? Like I've never heard that before, ever. No. So, I mean, they just always lied to us. Because remember when he came in the league, they was claiming he was, what, 230, 240? Yeah, they were saying he was, like, 245. Ain't no way, dudes. To- you ain't going to tell me he put 30 pounds on. And how long was his career in Carolina? Three years, four years? Yeah. it was. Uh, so, we drafted him in four? 2014. Yeah, we drafted 14. him in 2014. 14. Yeah. So, we uh, traded him in 2017. Yes, three good trade. Yeah, so, in hindsight, great trade. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like well, that just shows you how great Cam Newton was that he actually made Kelvin Benjamin look like a legit receiver. Facts. Say it, bro. Facts. Say it, dude. dude. The what other player could have made a one thousand yard receiver out of Kelvin Benjamin's ass? Like, and mm. Cam. Okay, we I guess probably it, Jameis as good as they was looking at Florida State. Yeah. But, but, but remember this though, man. Cam Newton, uh, he would even force feed Kelvin Benjamin the ball. Like he was trying to give the ball to Kelvin on, on or you know, anytime he could, trying to get Kelvin paid. So again, and then the way he threw Cam Newton under the bus the way he did, man. Like I just don't I don't feel sorry for people who can't take responsibility for their own actions, bro. So but that's um, always been Kelvin. If you look at even his college and high school career, you got to remember he was an older rookie. He was like 24 coming into the league because he had failed in school twice. He had weight issues at Florida State. He came in you know. to Florida State being big and being too heavy, and the coaches made him lose weight. So he always has, I mean, I guess he never really changed. He never grew up pretty much. My yeah. friend sent me a fake, uh, like a fake article about it. When I first heard about oh, yeah. it. Yeah, and I said he that was uh, kicked off for stealing food. Dude, I shared that shit all I over Twitter. It. Yeah, I, 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 I which I don't it. know how people would believe that because the food in the facilities is free. <laughs> no, but dude, it, it, it makes a better story, bro. It, it might yeah. be fake news, but in my life, bro, it's still real to me. It's still real <laughs> to me, damn it. <laughs> yeah, what what so what really sucks is like I mean, you know, the man was six five, he had all the potential to be like a great yeah. red zone receiver. And yeah. you look back at that draft, Devontae Adams went in the second round. We could have had him. And Allen Robinson. Yeah. It was all because we cut Steve Smith and then yeah. got put hurt and wanted a receiver. But uh hey, are y'all uh, are y'all ready to stop talking about that former useless wannabe red zone <laughs> Please. R- r- receiver in favor of a baller red zone receiver who is currently on the Carolina Panthers right now? You damn right I'm talking about Terrace Marshall Jr. Look, Ooh. I am so old about Terrace Marshall Jr., y'all. Yeah. And, what are you more excited for, the throw, I, though, or the catch? Dude, okay. Both of them. Dude, (laughs) that throw by Sam was one a dime. And I've got a bunch of clips I'll show periodically uh, throughout the day. I've got some Sam clips. I've got the Omar Bayless pass. I'll I'll show you guys all that. But I definitely wanted just to turn turn the attention to Terrace Marshall because as of right now, he has gotten so much buzz coming from training camp. People really kind of forget how big he is in that this man – is uh six foot four he says he's getting uh he's around 210 pounds nice. i mean this guy was a nightmare for the lsu tigers under joe brady's system i mean this man feasted on post routes down the field joe brady already knows how to utilize him to his maximum efficiency guys i'm absolutely pumped uh for terrace marshall yeah oh totally yeah I got him on my dynasty team. Oh, yeah? Nice. Nice. Yeah, what I love about 
what I love about Terrence Marshall is that uh he did it both ways even at LSU. He he, he played, you know, third fiddle behind Jamar Chase and, and Justin Jefferson and produced. And then with Jefferson in the league and Chase uh sitting out for a year, he became the man with no Joe Burrow and still was put on numbers. So yeah. I like definitely having a receiver that you can move, he can play the X, the Y, the Z, wherever you want him. And he's going to produce. And anybody who helps us in the red zone, I'm with. Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. Am I wrong to say that he reminds me of a far more athletic Devin Funches? I was thinking that yesterday. I yeah. really do get some Devin Funches vibes from him. Uh, hey, hang on. I got to add so much to the stream. And this guy is incredible. He donates to every Panther show that there is. This man loves Panther football. It's 89J Stubbs. J Stubbs, what's up, brother? What up, everyone? Look at that hop. I'm very really happy you could join us, man. Yeah, you're loud and clear, man. All right, perfect. Yeah, but happy you could join us. Uh, yeah, we're talking about a little bit about Terrace Marshall right now and uh, how he's really looking like he could be a standout player for the Carolina Panthers this year. Um, I just made the comparison to uh, – uh, 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 um, a more athletic Devin Funches, and that he isn't necessarily quick off the line, but once he gets that long speed going, dude, he picks up speed fast, and you don't even realize that he's, you know, streaking downfield. So, um, I mean, based on what you guys have seen online, uh, what what's exciting to do about Terrace Marshall and what he might be able to do for this offense? Red zone. That's probably the most exciting thing, really. Just how bad we were in the red zone last year. It was, yeah, red zone. Yeah, just like his athleticism and not to, uh, let's not ignore the fact that he did that on um, a seasoned veteran, Bouye. Yeah. Okay, so, I mean, yeah. it's it's exciting to see we got some uh, young talent back there in the depth chart. He's wearing 88. A lot of people. Yeah, go ahead, man. He's wearing 88, so he got to do something. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's simple yeah, as that. That number, is, uh, that number is really close to 89. So, uh, And that's, t- that's t- uh, Greg Olson's number. So, Exactly. Yeah, he's, if he's going to have that number, he's definitely got to live up to it, man. Yeah. Um, and then uh, shout out ROT 1981. This is a comparison I've been seeing a lot. Uh, a lot of people have been saying that Terrace Marshall reminds them of a young Muslim Muhammad. I would kind of prefer that uh, comparison a little bit more because to me, uh, Funches didn't really use his size. You never really saw Funches making box out kind of catches or using his body to shield the defender. Um, That was a kind of weird thing about having two big dudes is that Funches didn't really play big. And then KB could only play big and couldn't play fast. Uh, So, yeah, I I, I would kind of – compare him more to Moose than necessarily Funches. Okay. I hope so, man, because Moose was a monster. Yeah, that last year? Tom, Moose and Muhammad. Was was the For sure. Complete receiver, really, to be honest. So, we can only hope, man. That'd be great. Uh, one of the things I mentioned, I forget when I said it, um, link in the uh, description in the chat room if anybody wants to come in and hang out. Uh, but I said during one of our podcasts that um, I'm excited about the potential for the Panthers to be able to do some empty backfield, five receivers on the field type stuff, like really stretch out the offense. Uh, and we'll talk about the offensive line here in a minute. Uh, mm-hmm. We've gotten a lot of the different guys who've taken snaps at left tackle, which we all assumed was going to be the case. Um, but it's even kind of starting to look like I might be right. Like the Panthers might intend to play Taylor Moten at left tackle. Um, but if our offensive line can hold up, man, we have so much talent everywhere. Um, uh, another guy uh, that uh, I'll try and find this clip uh, that's been making the rounds uh, is Omar Bayless. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Omar Bayless apparently has looked tremendous. Uh, in practice, his routes uh, have been really, really crisp. And he has deceptive long speed, too, down the field. He can really pull away from you. Uh, so 
again, I feel like we have so much potential to do things on offense that we just haven't been equipped to do the past few years. Especially really, with having Teddy at the home. I mean, let's face yeah, it, how many yeah, of those throws that we've seen today yeah. did we see last season? <clears throat> Next to none. I mean, I, no. I get it. It's practice, but Teddy just doesn't even come close to having the arm that Sam does. I just hope Sam can be as accurate as he looks. Yeah. You know, I know this is all highlights, but if Sam can play – like he's playing at practice, I think we'll be in halfway decent shape. It's really going to depend on that O-line at, at that point. Who was that receiver we got from Seattle? I haven't heard anything since uh, David Moore? David Moore. David what's, Moore. His, what's his deal? Uh, David Moore. Had, uh, so I'm getting ready to show a, I'll show a clip of him here in a second. But this is a clip that was making its rounds on Twitter. Uh, shout out to Panthers on Tap Podcast on Twitter for sharing this. But one, peep the pass from Sam Darnold. Okay, a beautiful bomb you're about to see. But uh, then Omar Bayless and the route running. By the way, on J.C. Horn down here, number eight. Ooh. Just beautiful, dude. A dime right in the bucket. You notice Omar never had to come back to the football. Nah, uh, he was able to stay in stride. And, hell, even J.C. Horn, he was in phase – through that entire route up until the very end when Omar uh, kind of pulled away from him. Uh, so, again, there's a lot to like here, man. And yeah, Omar, our offense is already looking potent. Omar was a star last year in training camp, so. Yeah. You know, just going, back to, just going back to Sam, though, when we first signed him, I was sort of just, like, basing my opinion off what I heard from you guys. But recently, like, when I've been working from home, I've been watching <clears> the Jets games from last year. And I just feel sorry for him, like, watching him. Like, he makes some really good mm -hmm. passes, but he's just got his head down a lot of the time because of what's around him. And I really think, like, what we're putting around him now could really help him. You just, just got to stay optimistic. But watching them games was tough. I felt really sorry for him. It's hey, kind of... Uh, shout out to uh, my man, uh, CJA, uh, in the chat room here. Uh, he's sports nut on Twitter. This guy helps bring in, uh, bring me all the news that I might miss. And he said that um, Matt Rule was on WFNZ this morning talking about, uh, you know, so much of a quarterback's success is really dependent on where he goes and the talent that he has around him. Stuff that we already know, but it's like when you hear a professional head coach saying these things and, and saying how much they believe in their quarterback, it really makes you believe it even more that these guys are betting their their jobs on that premise being true that when you put a good football team around a talented player that it's going to pay dividends and it 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 makes me more assured of this team that Matt Rule believes that so strongly I mean it's practice too so I can only put so much faith into it yeah. yeah, I'm really looking forward to next week when they actually put the pads on. I mean, everybody yeah. looks good in shorts and T-shirts, but it's, when they <laughs> start hitting and the bullets start flying, that's when I'm really going to get interested. Yeah, they're supposed to win one-on-ones, you know what I mean? That's just mm – -hmm. everybody's yeah. going to look good yeah. in one-on-ones. I mean, that is, that, that's the big thing is that in one-on-ones, you have no scoopy help over the top. You have no middle linebackers to take some of the underneath routes. Um, There's no – Omar Bills – Definitely has potential. It'll just come down to um, just him being an addition at receiver. Uh, will that go against like somebody who can play special teams? Because I don't think I I don't really remember Omar Bayless being like a guy who they think can play special teams, like uh, a Brandon Zilstra who might beat him out for a spot just because you can put him at receiver and you can put him on special teams. Yeah. Uh, so hang on, we're gonna add one more one more person to the stream. Now I know this is my Panthers Houston guy from the Houston Roaring Riot, but you're gonna have to help me out with your name a little bit, bro. Hey, can you hear me? Uh, I think his camera's frozen. We'll let him try again in a little while. But uh, <laughs> listen, I wanted you guys. Uh, I wouldn't say that it's a debate, but I wanted to get people's opinion. Um, on this play, and again, it's training camp. No one's reading too much into this. But there was a small debate on Twitter as to whose fault this was. So I'll let y'all see the play at first. 
once again, shout out to Panthers on Tap podcast. Give them a like and a subscribe on Twitter. Um, but okay, this is a interception by Jeremy Chin. Sam Darnold throws a slant, hits DJ in the hands, and Jeremy Chin mm-hmm. gets an interception. Right now, one good heads up play by Jeremy Chin. But there was some debate as to was that right there. Should that should that ball should that okay, was that and this is my question to all of you. I'll let all of you answer. But should that ball have been a little bit lower? Or should DJ have came down with that seeing as how it hit him on the hands? It could have been a little bit lower. Lower. Yeah. Yeah. I I put more of it on Darnold. I mean, DJ should have had that, but at the at the end of the day, Darnold didn't really he was a little out of where he should have been. He definitely exactly. should have been lower and closer to the numbers. Yep. You you know, mean, it, could have been, it could have been better ball placement, but that's still on DJ's. You can't say that you're trying to be one of the best receivers in the league and let that be an interception. Does he jump first? If you don't do that. If you're going to be one of the best receivers in the league, you have to catch some of the passes that aren't perfect. Yeah, and see, I I, I agree with Team Money on that, man. It's like, again, this is training camp. They're they're still getting on rhythm. Like, I want them to mess up now as opposed to later, man. But uh, to to me, I I see both of those being a little true. I think it could have came down. But I also think, again, uh, especially when people are criticizing DJ for drops, like what Tim Money just mentioned, yeah, that's you know that's one of the things that he's really going to have to uh, be cognizant of is being a, a hands catcher, which I think he's done a good job uh, of, of doing that so far. But we definitely want to see some improvement. But, yeah, uh, we'll yeah go but, ahead. Oh, yeah. One thing is, as you see, when he goes to make that a uh, slant catch, he has to reach out for the ball. Yeah, yeah. And with a slant throw, you want him to catch in a stride and just keep going. So, I mean, it's on both of them. But a little bit I mean, high, a little that, bit fast. Yeah, he like, doesn't really have like, a lot of like speed on that play either. Yeah, he was kind of slow going through the field. So. Sideshow Rob said in the comments that he had two hands on it, which I agree with as well. Like. If you're getting two hands behind it, you sort of need to make the cut. That's true too. Yeah, that's facts. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's it's outlandish to say it's a little bit of both. That ball should have been mm-hmm. a little bit lower, uh, and you know, it, it hit DJ on the hands, and uh, especially if that's in the game, anything mm-hmm. that's able to hit your hands, you want him to be able to come down with. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or even if you're not going to catch it, you he have to not, sure not like catch anything. it in a way where it's not going perfectly behind you like that. Right. Thankfully, it's practice, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all right. Better now than later. Yeah, all those bad habits out. Yeah. Everybody's working out all the kinks. Once again, Panthers on Tap podcast. Uh, Sam Darnold dime to Omar Bayless with J.C. Horn in coverage. Uh, before I play it, let me see if I can get my man uh, Barack. Barack? Hey, can you hear me, bro? Yeah, I can hear you. It's Barrick. Barrett, Barrett, that's it, bro. Yeah. All right, hey, I'll never get it wrong ever again. What's up, Barrett? <laughs> How y'all doing? Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. It's James Barrett, Morfis Evangelista, reporting to you live from Houston, Texas, and Space City Riot. Baby. Keep pounding. Hey, keep Love pounding. Up. Shout keep out pounding, to yeah. Houston, man. Panthers representing all over our great nation. Uh, but yeah, world. man, uh, appreciate you. Welcome to the show. Um, again, so I'm just kind of bouncing around from topic to topic. And uh, anytime any of you want to talk about something else and bring up something else, this is your show, man. Feel free to do it and just get my attention. Uh, but uh, right here, we got Omar Bayless uh, on JC Horn and coverage. Is this a yeah, okay, so we, we played this one earlier. Now, let me mm-hmm. play the uh, the, the David Moore clip. Um, if I can don't worry, be Dante. Um, I I think it was Dante that he beat in coverage, or I'm gonna have to find it. Cover me for a minute while I look through my mess of likes. Yeah, I know they was talking about some play. I guess he beat Dante like 30 yards down the field with a good route. Which I mean, that's what uh David Moore, if you remember that game that. <laughs> he had against us when he was with Seattle. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I can't remember Dude. who was covering him that game. 
Well, whoever, was it corn? Was it? I think it was corn. It might, it might have been corn. Yeah, it was yeah. corn. Corn was cooked. Was that, game. Back back that, that game was awful. All right, so this is uh, David Moore. Yeah, with Dante Jackson and coverage. Nice throw. Uh, yeah, not, then that's pretty much why I'm pointing it out. Uh, Sam Darnold has 100% been throwing bombs. And this is another perfect pass down the field on a vertical route. And uh, David hmm. Moore just uh, kind of fails to bring it in. And again, man, I ain't, I ain't judging anybody too harshly yet. Uh, it's training camp. But if anything, I'm just hopeful uh, of, of Sam Darnold. I mean, all the reports right now is that he's throwing laser beams all around the field. Um, that he's looking impressive, man. Even on some of these drops, the ball placement is right where it needs to be. Everything's looking good. He did the five in the morning, too. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to keep him healthy. We saw what just happened to Carson Wentz. The last, the last mm-hmm. thing we need. What happened to Carson Wentz? He hurt his foot. He hurt his foot at the end of practice yesterday. And they're not sure if at this point if he's gonna have to have surgery and if he's That's gonna be there for the regular for the beginning of the regular season. All right, so uh so we got the, the upgraded edition of StreamYard. So we should be able to handle a bunch of people, but for whatever reason, if the show fills up uh, and we can't hold anymore, I might have to siphon some people in and out. But uh, I definitely want to welcome our next two guests, uh, Panther Rule. Oh, I can't. So I am going to have to funnel some people in and out. Um, All right, Cody. Well, I'm going to drop off for a minute. I got some stuff, but I'll catch up with you guys later. All right. I appreciate you, AJ. I appreciate you stopping by, man. All right. Cody, I'm going to drop out, too. I got a show tonight, and I'm pulling up to the spot, to the venue. So I got to go perform. All right. I appreciate you stopping by, man. Yeah, for sure. Good luck, man. Thank you. Thank you, all. Yeah, man. Keep pounding. Keep pounding. Keep pounding. Keep pounding. Representing all the way from Houston. Gotta love it. Uh, first, let me introduce uh, Panther Rule. Panther Rule, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. Um, I wanted to stop by and let y'all know I was uh, listening to Sears XM Radio, the NFL network on it, or the channel. And I, I do on the way home anyway. So then, but I hap- they happen to be at Panthers camp the, today. Uh, uh, Horn was on the re- on with them. They was talking to him. And he said that his his biggest problem he was having so far was the off man coverage. The man on man coverage he was great at, but he said he was he 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 said he's learning and he's learning quick. But he said he's been caught a few times in camp, uh, uh, trying to figure out watching the quarterback and the receiver. He said he's learning, but. But he said that's his biggest battle right now because he didn't play a lot of that in college. Okay. Which would describe that play even with Omar. If you watch him at the line, he didn't touch him at the line. But, but, yeah. So hold on one sure. sec because I got someone in here who I definitely think can shine some more insight onto this situation. You've probably been following his content that he's been streaming live from Panthers training camp. You know him. You love him from Panther Nation, Panther Nation podcast. Rashad, what's up, bro? Yeah. What's good, y'all? What's good? What's, what's up, Rashad? What's going on? What's going chilling. on, fellas? What's going chilling, on? Chilling, man. Chilling, man. How you been? Man, I'm just I'm good, man. It's a, a great. It's been a great day. It's been a hey, great bro, day. Hey, bro, are you say. hydrated? Are you hydrated? <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. It, it was it wasn't that hot today, man. I'm I'm hydrating right now. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I feel you, bro. Yeah. I like that. On, I man. like that. I like that. So you know, listen, you know it. Oh, that, that boy, you got that buffalo chase? Absolutely, 100%. I feel that, my brother. I feel that. So, listen, uh, uh, Panther Rule was just asking uh, about JC Horn uh, and off man coverage. Why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, what you've seen from JC down there in Spartanburg? Yeah, I mean, listen, it's it's still hard. It's, I, I don't want to get too, too excited either way. Um, it's hard. They're in shells. Uh, today they were in shells. Before that, they were in shor- shorts and t shirts. So it's, I mean, it's hard to come away with, and the, you know, these one-on-one drills, they're not, they're not designed for DBs to win, right? So they're, they're, they're really, really difficult. It's, it's difficult to come away with something. So, um, I mean, I, I like what I've seen from JC. I like what I've seen from a lot of the guys. Sam Franklin is another guy I, I, who had a good day today. Um, and uh, I, I, I mean, listen, I think JC Horn, he's going to be good. 
But at the end of the day, we got to give them time. We got to give them some time to kind of get it figured out. All rookies, they struggle with this. They struggle with that uh, coming up. Okuda did the same thing last year. He struggled mightily. Um, so it, it, just give him give him some time. He's gonna take some lumps. Let's not let's not uh, rush him up to uh, to the, the greatest DB of all time just yet. Let's give him some time. But I think I think he's got the tools uh, to be to be great eventually. But give well, him let's time. hope he he's good. not a Cuda because a Cuda struggled all year. <laughs> it happens, bro. It happens. Some of the best rookie, some of the best cornerback struggled their rookie year. Their entire yeah. rookie. Year. I just so don't I, want him to look like. I just don't want him to look Okuda bad. It happens, bro. You got a be little bit better. You gotta be prepared for that. You gotta be prepared for it. So, uh, Rashad, why don't you tell me what was going through your mind when you were recording this, man? Follow PNP on Twitter. Oh yeah. JC oh, yeah. Horn's first interception of training camp. Uh, oh, listen. Yeah, man. Talk listen, let me it. let me let me break this one down. Let, let's let's pause it real quick. Go okay. back. You see this right there? Yep. At that moment. At that moment. Sam one. Donald's about to get his head taken off. That's what was about to happen, okay? <laughs> so, and, and listen, he pulled up. I saw this several times, several, several, several times, dog. Okay. It, I got several videos of just the defense getting constant push. And uh, I think Sam just let it go. He let it rip. Uh, and it's funny because I saw I saw that you had that the, the prior pass where there was no defense. No, it was just one-on-ones, and Sam Donald laid that one into Omar Bayless's hands, right? Yeah. But yeah. then you have this one with the defense – uh, the defense right there on his neck, and he and he underthrew it. So this mm-hmm. is gonna happen, bro. It's gonna happen. Like this, this is the problem. The same problem with Teddy Bridgewater. It's the same thing. He underthrew this one. It's the same thing we saw from Teddy Bridgewater. Dude had a, a, a DJ had a nice one or two steps on Dante. If he laid it up, that would have been a touchdown. Obviously, he didn't get he didn't get a chance to put much under it because of the because of the pressure. So it's something. Again, we can't take too much from it. Again, yeah. shorts and shells, it's tough. It's really hard to kind of – but I tell you what, man, the defense – I was out there today, bro. Defense was on fire today, bro. They were on fire, fam, on fire. And see, that's, fire. What's, that's what's so hopeful about this, right? It's like, yeah, you know, our offensive line uh, was made to look a fool. But, dude, that's the, that's the game plan that we're shooting for, an aggressive mm-hmm. defense to get in the face of the quarterback and let JC make plays exactly like this. Um, again, I'm I'm pumped about this defense. I'm thinking it's uh it's looking pretty nasty so far. But especially with no pass, to me, those guys that we have that are the fast guys are gonna look even faster. The the Burns, the mm-hmm. the Christian Millers, the the Reddings, the Marquise Haynes, them guys, especially with no pads on, they just gonna be too quick for the line yes. uh right now. I heard Burns so many. We're gonna be able to disguise so many packages and blitzes too. The versatility from the secondary to the corner blitzes to everything. Man. It's gonna be exciting. Right. Right. I've 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 been saying I'm interested to see um how often the Panthers blitz this season. Uh, is that gonna be something that we revert back to like we were under Eric Washington when we were a real Blitz heavy football team. I kind of think that we're built to be successful doing some of that too. So as long as we point. don't go like Steve Wilkes level blitzing, like he was ridiculous yeah. though. We have no choice. We have no choice later. Yeah. Well, I'm interested to see how how they move that that the first day they had that three four little concept in, and I'm interested to see how much they revert to that versus your basic defense they well they they did have a good look today um where uh it was a four three look but it was two uh, actually it was a four two look uh and they had two uh they had um burns and reddick stand up on the outside they had morgan fox Derek brown in the middle and then they had two linebackers i uh uh they had uh shaq thompson shaq uh, and um jermaine carter in the middle and then they had they had Dante Jackson and um, J.C. Horn on the outside and then A.J. Bouye at, at nickel. And I think that's a very interesting look. Hmm. Uh, and then obviously the two safeties in the back. But that's a look that I saw today. So I think you'll see multiple looks. But they did start out with that 3-4 look for sure. Wow. Do you think that four two five could have maybe been what they feel like is going to be uh, sort of like their NASCAR package? I don't know. I think – it's it's tough, man. I think your best players, when you you bring your best players out, when you have 
all those three DBs on the field. You have AJ Bouye, you have Dante Jackson, and you have JC Horn on the field at the same time. I mm-hmm. think that four two package or four two five package is the best package because you have your best playmakers out there. Um, when you when you go back to the original four three look or the three four look, excuse me, um, you you remove one of those DBs, and I think you don't, especially nowadays. Obviously, it's a, it's a passing league, so you got to have more DBs on the field. And I think that four three the four two five look is probably the best look. So I don't know what they're gonna do out of it. Uh, but again, you got so many big bodies in that in that three four two man. Derek Brown, Morgan Fox, Daquan Jones. It, it's hard. It's hard. Phil Snow's got to work his work cut out for him for sure. It's it's hard to kind of pick and choose. He's got he's play got to play chess out there, bro. He's got a lot of toys to play with. That's a good though. He didn't yeah. have that last year, so that's good. Yeah. A lot of toys, dude. But but good the the good thing is, is that we're seeing multiple looks, right? That's the good. Yeah. Thing. And this is something that I was hoping that we would do. Like, uh, I think I said it uh, last Friday, free for all, man. Like, we're versatile. We can run a four three and a three four. I feel like we we have the talent to be able to do both. So I'm interested to see what the coaches ultimately uh, settle on. Um, I haven't really noticed from. Um, and by the way, shout out to all the Panther creators, man. Everybody that's been sharing stuff on YouTube and Twitter. Uh, but we got Rashad in here at PAP, but also Panthers on Top podcast. Cat Crave is doing a good job. Shout out to everybody keeping us all updated. But um, I haven't, family. yeah, 100%. Um, but I haven't necessarily noticed too many people um, saying a whole lot about our defensive line. And again, uh, you know, it's still early. But um, I- I'm wondering, uh, you know, maybe why we haven't heard too much. Um, about our defensive linemen yet? Is it just because it's still too early in practice or has not enough time passed? Or I don't know, who who should we have our eyes on? It's probably a is good thing. I was going to say, is that a question for me? Yeah, for pretty I, much any, yeah, anybody, okay. anybody who wants to take it, man. I, know yeah, I'll take it. I don't really I'll want no judging on the line, either line, or offensive line, or defensive line to get in pads. Yeah, I was going to say it's tough because there's no pads. I mean, I, I, today was the first time – it was the second time they ran eleven on elevens, right? But it, the the defensive line today really got after it. Like I, that's, I mean, they were running play action passes, and Brian Burns was in the backfield like immediately. Uh, so that's the first time I really saw them tee off like that. Well, not really tee off because they're not hitting, but that's the first time I really saw them get after it. It's really not much you can take away. Now I will say it's been quiet for dudes like I saw somebody in the chat, YGM. It's been quiet for him, bro. I haven't heard, and I'm I'm out there every day. I see no noise from him, bro. None. Last nothing. time I heard about him was uh, after we drafted him, really. Yeah, I have seen I nothing. Heard or heard, heard nothing. Might get lost. I think song. maybe. I think maybe he'll end up being one of those run stopping guys. Because again, what Matt? What will matter as far as how versatile we can be is also how much um, can Hassan Reddick play on the edge on rundowns. Yeah, I think that's a good question because outside of YGM, like we really don't have a super strong physical edge uh, on that side of the line. Well, I, I think mean, I think Morgan Fox can do it. Morgan Fox Morgan is an Fox? edge inside. He can play both. He's a would twin. you would you trust that name more than Christian Miller or Marquise Haynes? At yes, this point? Me, yes, yeah. okay. way more. Not even close. Okay. Yeah, both of them will be playing kind of hybrid, like a sign ready. They won't really be. You know your big guys that you don't want on running downs, but Morgan Fox is a good name that I could see they kick out to defensive end. Uh, I think he'll sort of be in that FA role this year. Who's the other defensive tackle besides Brown? Uh, John Jones, Bravion Roy. Do you think it's uh, the and Phil Hoskins when he uh, come back? Yeah. Have you uh, yeah, Nick, you seen anything Nixon's from uh, from Davion Nixon? Again, yeah, I know nope. it's early. It's been quiet. Yeah, it's been quiet for him yeah. too. Honest, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. It's been real quiet for all the rookies outside of Brian Burns and uh, Terrace Marshall. Obviously, they play skill positions, but it's been quiet, bro. Chuba Hubbard, I ain't. I haven't even seen him. It's been like, where you at, bro? <laughs> haven't seen him. Haven't heard his name. Haven't seen his reps. I'll be honest, man. Trent Cannon is making uh, more noise. Uh, than Chuba Hubbard, right? What about Hall? What I seen. What about Hall? Is he still quiet? But that's sort of what you're expecting this early because they still probably digesting the playbook and that kind of stuff. True. Uh, So 
I don't think we'll really see some of those guys until the preseason. And shy too. Sorry, shy is balling too right now. My bad. Shy. They've yeah. they've had uh, Trent and Ken lined up at wide receiver a lot, haven't they? Yep. He took a, a matter of fact. I just posted a video uh, with one on ones, and uh, he had a one on one today uh, lined up at wide receiver. So yep. Hmm. It's definitely there's a lot of exciting news going on uh, around training camp, man. I feel like we've. Um, uh, oh, Rashad, I did want to speak to you a little bit more about Omar Bayless. I know everybody's been really excited about him and, and what he's been doing. Uh, people are talking like he might be a lot to make the team. What is that? Is that too far fetched right now? Or no, you, not right now. My man, is, my man is balling right now. I see seventeen yep. out there cooking up dudes. Again, he's another one that I, I posted a one on one video today. He's out there cooking up dudes. He had a nice rep. I don't know who he went up against. I can't remember on top of my head. Uh, but he he torched somebody. Obviously had that good rep against JC Horn. He's he's playing well, bro. He's playing well. What I was that that, that what I was saying um, is, do you think he can be a lot? Second. Hold on one second. That that uh the battle between uh for that fifth, the five, six, and potentially seven wide receiver, it's gonna be tough, bro. It's gonna be tough, man. It's gonna who do you, who do you, so who, who are the names? I got a bias. The names? I got a bias though. I got a bias. Okay. We know your bias. <laughs> yeah, I got a bias. My boy Brandon Zilcher. That's that's my bias. So <laughs> I got right. a, I got Brandon Zilcher as a lock. Right, Smith. I got him as a lock. That's my boy. Uh, but I think locks right now for sure, like one hundred percent locks. You got DJ, obviously Robbie. Uh, you got um, uh, Marshall, and you got Shy Smith. Those are your four cats that ain't going nowhere, right? And then outside of that, outside of that, you got you got Omar Bayless who's, who's balling out, right? He's 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 having a good one. Zilsha, he's he's solid. He, all bias aside, he's he's having a solid camp too. Um, and who else we got? I got to pull up. This is a whole bunch of wide receivers. And we just signed some too. Oh, oh Rashad, yeah, you're always Rashad lost, Rashad yeah. lost connection. Bro. We'll get him back. You're always going to have a lot of receivers yeah. during this time. You just trying to That's throw true. stick names on the wall. Yeah. Ever since we signed David Moore, I've been hearing negative things about him. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm not. I don't know that David Moore will make the roster. Yeah, yeah so. my bad. My bad. Yeah, da- David Moore forward. is another one. Yeah, he's he's actually been uh actually xed out. My fault. But uh, he's. I think he's going to be. <coughs> he's he's yeah. with you. I've seen some drops from him, but the again because. Show. because because he has that relationship with Fitter, I don't know. You know, he mm-hmm. might get the, the good old, you know. I, I don't know, though. I don't know. Cody, didn't you just show that video where he dropped that touchdown pass? Yeah, 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 yeah. He, uh, and it was right on the money, too. And yeah, that kind of. That was a great throw. Yeah. He had more and, than but, one of those. More than one He's competing those. for a job, too. So, so what I wanted to a, ask yeah, Rashad ahead. was have you seen. Um, when they do special teams, have you seen Omar Bayless out there at all? Because to me, that's the one thing that I think it might hurt him in getting a spot is that he doesn't play special teams, and somebody like your boy Zilstra uh, does. Well, what what do you mean as a special team? Like Gunner or like uh, kick? Any? Uh, did you see him at all on special teams? I, I honestly, I'm, I'm gonna be completely honest, man. When they do special teams, I, I check out, bro. Unless <laughs> okay. it's like kick, unless it's kick returns. <laughs> Unless it's kick returns or punt returns, yeah, I check out, man. I check out, to be honest. Yeah, I just feel like that might hurt him in that battle because he can't. Well, I I mean, he was a star receiver in college, so I highly doubt he was playing special teams. But I'm telling y'all, man, Omar looks good, man. Omar looks good. Uh, Let me. I'm looking at the list right here. Hyman. Hyman is the guy that y'all need to watch. That's the dude that's having a good camp and could sneak up on somebody and take somebody's spot. Because he's receiver? like, yeah, he's a receiver. Ishmael Hyman, yeah. number 13. I got it. Yeah. There's a rep. There's a rep on the video I just posted. Yo, dude, cook some. Oh, he tripped, almost fell. He was doing like an out route and he, he came back. He caught the ball, but he was off balance. I mean, this dude's having a good camp too. Hyman is somebody you need to watch. Could body somebody's spot. But they, again, David Moore is that, that guy you got to watch because he's so. He's got that, that connection, bro. Yeah. He's got that connect, man. He's got that, and he's got a two-year deal. He's connected. Plus, you, they've you know, seen him do it. Plus, they've seen him do it in games. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. When, when they line up the pads and they're actually going against other people in preseason, that may that may sort out some of these folks. Oh yeah. Yeah, those joint so, practices are going to be fun to watch. But even that, it's been guys that we've seen that we've loved in preseason and balled in preseason and still got cut. True. Yeah. 
Hey man, I'm actually upset that Carson Wentz got hurt today, man. I was, yeah. uh, you know, I was lacking, um, especially if he had a chip on his shoulder. I thought that would have been good, good for a defense to face another big arm quarterback that was going to want to throw the ball downfield to T.Y. Hilton. Um, right. We don't, we don't yet know what his injury is or how severe it is. Who, who's his backup? Uh, so the Colts the drafted uh, Jacob Eason. Yeah, oh, from, uh, oh. yeah, from Washington, yeah. uh, transferred out of Georgia. Um, it's him and uh, Sam Ellinger from Texas. Yeah, Texas. Oh, cool. Oh, but listen, uh, while I got all of you in here, man, uh, uh, I'm just going to pitch this to everybody, man. What do we think about Sam Darnold? I feel like right now there's so much excitement surrounding Sam and the passes that he's made. Um, listen, I ain't got to tell y'all, there's a large contingent of the Panther fan base that they don't want Sam Donald to be our quarterback. They think he's right. so bust. Um, you know, they believe what they saw with the Jets. That's who Sam Donald is. I've never agreed with that. Uh, I think that we're the place to help him maximize his potential. But all the reports I've seen so far, and Rashad, are, you know, again, I'll let you uh, speak on this too and then pass it around to everybody. But, like, should Panther fans have any reason to uh, – to not be excited, at least by these early days of what Sam has done? I don't think so. Like I said before, okay. I think the potential's there. I think we just need to put the right tools around him and just believe in him a bit and then see what he can do. We've got to give him a chance. Yeah, I'm not rooting against any Panther quarterback. If I didn't yeah, do exactly. it, that, that Jimmy Claus year, every week, if you would have asked me, I thought Jimmy was going to come in there and pull something out of his ass. <laughs> but uh, I'm always going to root for whoever's our short starting quarterback. But Rashad had a good point. I need to see how you look. That deep ball looked good with no pressure. I need to see how it looked when them bullets is fired. Daniel goes out there. I'm telling y'all, man. Sure. I'm, he undershot. I'm talking y'all. Y'all killed Teddy for doing that last year. All I'm saying is keep. I say it. Keep that same energy, bro. I'm you not keep excited. That same energy. That's all. I'm how saying. many of those underthrows? How many of those underthrows would you say were a product of our defense on that play? That on that particular play. On, that's what I'm. It's exactly what I'm saying. Like the 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 offensive line is not is going to be the problem here. That that's gonna right. we we can we can talk about Sam Donald all we want to. None of that shit matters. I think he has what it takes. He has some tools to be a, a solid quarterback. Same as Teddy Bridgewater. He could be a decent yeah. quarterback, bro. But at the end of the day, you gotta have and you can have all these beautiful shiny objects. Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore, Terrace Marshall, yeah. Christian McCaffrey, all that's great. But I'm yeah. telling y'all, bro, I was you out there today. It doesn't matter. 11 on 11, it was ugly, bro. I'm, these play action pl passes on, I'm telling, I got the video too, and I, I could post it all. Bro, Brian Burns was killing whoever he was. I don't know who it was. I got to go back and zoom in because I'm so far away. But Brian Burns was going straight hand, bro. Like, he, as soon as the ball was snapped, Brian Burns was back there, bro. And Again, not too many guys are built like Brian Burns, not as fast as Brian Burns. Mm -hmm. We could talk about the conversation doesn't need to be centered about, around Sam Donald. I think he has what it takes. Mm -hmm. Offensive line is the problem. Uh, but do you think that matters a little bit more right now because you're not really having to respect the run. You're not really making tackles on the run even when – And the, uh, and the – Like when you run play action, they're not – they not having a look at McCaffrey really getting the ball. Oh uh, yeah, they handed it off a couple times. Yeah, but they uh, but they know they're not playing the run for real. They not tackling yeah, enough. Yeah, they're. I think they're. A, a, they are tapped to play their assignments. If they see Christian McCaffrey get the ball, they gotta attack their assignments. They're not just gonna let him walk. They gotta two hand yeah. touch him at least. So that play action does earn some respect even in these practice reps, in my opinion. So we've oh, well, all been. Uh, well, actually, real quick, shout out. 89J Stubbs. I appreciate you coming through today, brother. Hopping on the show. Uh, thank you for the 499. He says, had to punch out, keep pounding. But we got to talk about left tackle and right tackle. Everywhere, Moten is the other side getting marked. So, again, I've been saying I think that uh, Taylor Moten is probably going to end up playing left tackle for us. Yeah, I think so. Uh, um, I don't necessarily know if that's the right thing to do, but we might not have any better options. At left tackle, um, I'm Tundra. wondering have we had have we had any sightings of uh, David Moore or Deontay Brown? 
Uh, I yeah, seen I somebody post, posting Deontay Brown. That, yeah, I posted. Uh, I posted Deontay Brown today. Uh, I got a, I got two reps from him playing uh, right guard today. I mean, he was solid, uh, but uh, I, David Moore haven't seen him. Although I'm telling you, all our rookies been playing second and third string. I haven't really seen they. They haven't really made much noise. I did see Dave, early I did see, I did see David Moore um, get uh, a rep at center. Um, this was 11 on 11s yesterday, so that was positive. I'm happy to see that. I think he could be our potential backup center. Uh, but yeah, man, I don't think any of these guys, um, I don't think any of these guys are, are you know, again, like, uh, like T Money said, it's, it is early. I, I and truth be told, JC Horn got his first rep with the ones today, so it's gonna take some time for them guys to kind of get shuffled in. Yeah. Um, yeah. and, and, and hopefully they make a little bit more noise, but yeah, left For tackle, sure. right tackle, it, it ain't it ain't pretty, bro. It's not but, pretty, man. It, you, it, you, heard it, it it comes, yeah. you heard it from you heard it from Fitter himself, bro. Yeah, I I, I have it's zero fluid. faith in Cam Irving. I just do. I have. But it comes to the age old the age old question of do you let Moten be a dominant right tackle and play his position that he should be at, or because we don't have the depth. Do you let him play left tackle where he's an okay or serviceable left tackle, but he's not dominant, especially in today's NFL where it's not like necessarily okay. They best pass rusher is going to be in front of left tackle. A lot of teams move their best, best pass rushers get to move or pick whatever side anyway. So I'd rather have Moten being as dominant as he can be on his side than okay at left tackle. And they move, they best pass rusher on the other side anyway. Yeah. I think it really comes down to how mm. the how the right side looks once you move Taylor over. If the right side looks like absolute garbage and Taylor's not playing his best ball, then I'm sorry, you got to keep Taylor on the right side and then shove a tight end or an extra running back or something along those lines on the left side to, to help keep Sam right. safe. Yeah, you know, but, but the other thing is, too, the nice thing – the, the thing that we're seeing today is how fast our defense is. So it's always going to keep Sam on his toes. We need to see how Sam does under pressure. Because let's face it, in games, he's going to be under pressure. So if he's under throwing things now, if he's not going to be accurate now, he's not going to be accurate in the games. Now, don't get me wrong. I want to see him ball out. I want to see him do his thing. But And I know he needs to get more time with his receivers, get get more comfortable, that sort of deal. But how he's doing right now is pretty important. You know, we have we have to we have to remember that. Is any of this too early to yeah. hit the panic button? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's I'm, what I'm, I'm, saying. Not saying that, like, I'm not saying that any of us. I are. feel like don't judge either line until we get the. But, but also, I, I also yeah. want us to put it in context. Every single one of us knew that we were going to have a lot of decision-making to do on our offensive line, that yeah. nothing going into this training camp is set in stone. Right now, we have no idea who's truly going to be our left tackle or right tackle. We have to let that competition. We don't even know the guards for sure. We don't really know nothing but Moten and Pierce. Yeah, I just know Moten and Pierce. That's it. Yeah, I was going to say real quick, I think it's, yes, it is early. It is, I, I 100% agree with that. We don't need to make any judgments <clears throat> right now. But I think it's important to follow the tea leaves. You need to start piecing these items together so as a fan base, we aren't fucking caught off guard. Have unrealistic expectations. Bingo. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You need, yeah. to, you need to piece these puzzle pieces together. All right, Sam wasn't that great under pressure. Well, he wasn't that great in training camp. You need to follow this along so that we're not blindsided. So, well, I think it's important. Yeah. Yes, shirt. I said it a million times. I prefaced this when I posted this stuff, bro. Shorts and shells. They're not in pads yet. Okay, so that you mm-hmm. need to take this stuff with a grain of salt. It's important not to make any drastic, uh, you know, uh, you know, decisions either way on how you're going to feel about the team. But you need to keep it in the back of your brain, bro. Like this, <laughs> yo. Prepare yourself. Fam, because you you don't want to be disappointed. That's well, do you think that will get your boy on the on um, field more Tommy Trimble to help block? Tommy Trimble, does that get Tommy Trimble on the field more? Uh, to try to help the old Tommy, Tommy. Honestly, haven't seen Tommy much either. Dan Arnold's been getting all the snaps, bro. 
I haven't seen him. Well, I'm just saying, like, if, if you were running, if you were playing him at fullback or as a second tight end, would you, I mean, you know, keep him in the block pretty much? We can take, we can talk hypotheticals, bro. I'm going by what I see. I ain't seen it. This is all for like people make sure they're in shape more. Hey, 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 real quick, whoever's got background music, uh, either mute your microphone or just wait until, yeah, okay, there you go. Uh, hey, real quick, let me uh, let me introduce uh, Cole Allen joining the show. Cole, what's going on, dude? Yeah, what's up, man? How you doing? Dude, I'm doing good, man. What's your uh, what's your initial thoughts to the first three days of Panthers training camp? Uh, not too much. It's pretty early so far, so I haven't seen. Yeah. Much. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to kind of take this uh conversation back to something we were talking about before, uh, and that's Terrace Marshall Jr. Uh, I think out of every player that that um we've been following on this team. The one that I have personally seen get most of the rave reviews has been Terrace Marshall. And again, you know, it's the early part of training camp. They're, you know, throwing against air pretty much. Um, but my, I'm, I'm just trying to, to gauge what is a reasonable um, a set of expectations for Terrace Marshall. Because I've been very bullish on him. I, I think Terrace Marshall... Uh, is going to be a real big contributor for us this year in his rookie season. So, yeah, go ahead, man. Cody, let me let me let me put a little bit of uh, let me just preface this because I think it's important. He got his he had his best day when Robbie Anderson was gone. Okay, so a lot of the hype, a lot of the, the a lot of the things, his best day when he was all over Panthers.com, he got interviewed was when Robbie Anderson was gone. Okay, so if Robbie Anderson is not going to be here, great. He might have a thousand yard season, but if Robbie yeah. Anderson's here, he is like he is the number three wide receiver. I tell you that I did see Sam Darnold and uh, Sam Darnold uh, was was doing some separation drills. They were one on one. Uh, they were separated from the rest of the uh, the rest of the team. It was Sam Darnold, Terrace Marshall, Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore. They were all just working on uh, individual drills or doing some routes. So that was good to see. Uh, that was good to see those those four guys in particular together working on routes. Um, so again, but I, I just say this: just relax because his best day was with, Ter- uh, with uh, Robbie Anderson going. That's all. True. I, well, I guess True. you would hope. I, I mean, again, that's hoping Joe Brady will do maybe some plays where it might be Terrence and DJ on the outside or Terrence and Robbie on the outside and you move in the other two in the slot sometimes. <laughs> but, I mean, that's going to be up to Joe Brady at the end of the day. Rashad, how was Robbie? How, how's he looking in training? Because I saw his, his interview before he went to camp and he just looked like he didn't want to be there, to be honest. He looked yeah. really... Uh, I, think, I think that's just Robbie, though. Like, I think yeah. Robbie, that's just his personality. He looks fine. Yeah, I, He's strong. strong somebody... He torched somebody, and I, I I got the end of it, so I didn't put it in the video. But he torched somebody on a, a slant route and took it to the house. No, uh, so he looks fine. He looks yeah. fine. I'll tell you, this is Robbie, just a cool, laid back dude, man. I just think that's his personality. <laughs> I don't it's think Robbie. Yeah, I've never felt like Robbie is a good interview. Really, <laughs> <laughs> it's a great interview, bro. He tell, tells it like it is. Dave, what's good, bro? What's up, Dave? What's, what's up, man? So you got the whole PMP in here. Bro, yeah. we all chilling, man. That's what the Friday free for all is. It's for absolutely everybody to come in and chill. Um, and hey, by the way, uh, so I'm probably gonna have to filter some people in and out. Uh, if I bump you out, you don't have to leave. I can bring you back in, and you can even say some stuff in the chat if you want to come back in. But uh, if hey, we have buddy. too many people. Um, I'll boost, man. It's getting pretty late here now. It's like 1 a.m. Um, hey, I wanted to ask you, where, where, where are you at, man? Uh, Manchester. England. Manchester. Wow. Yeah. Across the pond. I love it, dude. Exactly. I, I, I love I, I, it whenever I, we get uh, UK fans into the C3 <laughs> chat room, bro. I'm just waiting for the Panthers to come to the London games. I'll be there. Oh, um, man. But, I know it. I know it. I feel but, yeah. I, 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 like you all have like Panthers gear on and stuff, which is cool. I have some as well, but like my main piece is this. It just doesn't fit on my head, and that's like <laughs> all right. it's the old it's the old logo and that, and it's ninety four for the guy that just left, obviously F A Obada repping the flag. All right, but, all right. um, no, it's a pleasure to come in with you guys. Thanks for having me. 
Yeah, keep, keep, keep pounding, man. Keep pounding. Yeah, keep pounding. Keep pounding. Keep pounding. Yeah, Cody, I'm a, uh, I got to peace out and be a dad and mow the lawn because that vile sun is down. You know what I'm <laughs> so, I hear you, bro. Yeah, hey, man, um, as always, I appreciate you uh, coming hang out with me, bro. Hell yeah, yeah. I'm digging the shirt, David. PMP. De La Soul, that's my group. <laughs> that's a hip hop yeah. head, yeah. bro. That dude's a hip hop head. Don't, don't, don't get him started, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the PC boys. Uh, let's not do this, bro. No, no, we're not, we're not having no this Beastie Boy conversation, bro. We're not doing it. I swear. Hey, Supreme, I appreciate you, brother. Until Word. next time, man. Hey, y'all boys, be easy. Yeah, man. I appreciate you, bro. Um, yeah, man. I'm just gonna uh, again, this is the Friday free for all. This is a show for y'all and by y'all. Whatever's on your mind, whatever you want to talk about, uh, that's what this show is for, man. I'm just kind of guide this conversation along. Uh, Rashad, I got to tell you, though, man, you're not going to kill my vibe, bro. I'm still on my Terrence Marshall shit. I'm, just I'm trying, still pumped up I'm for this man, question, dude. Buddy. Yeah, I'm and trying, one, one, more, one, more, one more thing. One more thing to what Rashad said, though. Uh, how much of that do you think uh, Sam Darnold and Robbie Anderson trying to reignite that old flame a little bit? Maybe they had that connection going on. Maybe as soon as Anderson got off the field, Maybe it kind of gave Terrence Marshall some room to breathe and kind of spread his wings a little bit. If yeah, you will. yeah, I think it just got him on the field more. I think it put, it put him in that number two spot, and I, he did a damn good job. Especially again, we, when we when we talk about these players, we got it's got to be level, right? We got to talk about the good, the bad, right? The day before that, dude did not look good. Okay, he had yeah, no, he had some drops. Yeah. yeah, so let's yeah, when we talk about it, we got to make sure we you know. Keep it real, Keep right, it and that's the things, of, and that's part of being young is that you're gonna be inconsistent at exactly. times. Exactly. Yeah, sometimes exactly. you're gonna have your yeah, good yeah. days, and sometimes you're gonna have your days where you struggle. Exactly. Hey, coming off an injury. Their, yeah, we want them to have their bad days now during training camp before it gets to be uh meaningful football. And Tyler Cunningham is joining us. What's up, Tyler? Tyler, you there? Mm-hmm. Right, we'll come back to Tyler. Um, yeah, Rashad and uh, David, when y'all see Terrence in the slot, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, Tyler, what's up, bro? Can you hear me, bro? Yeah, I can yeah. hear you now. You can't hear us. Yeah, you can't hear, hear us. us. Yeah, you might have to uh, reconnect and connect, and I'll, I'll bring you back in, Tyler. Uh, but go ahead, Tim, you were saying something. Uh, what I was going to ask was when y'all see him in the slot, though, does he look like he knows what he's doing? Like, is he playing fluid, or does he look like he's thinking a lot? Honestly, man, the, the views that we got is really difficult to identify a particular player in their particular position. Like I haven't okay. watched him from the slide; it's just too hard, they're too far away. It, so I have to go back and watch um, uh, those guys. I have to go back and watch what I have to, to kind of isolate him. Uh, but today, um, I really didn't see much of him. Like when, it, and that's what I'm talking about, right? We we got mm-hmm. hyped because we saw him a lot yesterday because he was uh, it, playing in absence of Robbie Anderson today. I didn't see him much when it came to eleven on elevens, seven on sevens. They didn't, they didn't throw his way, and honestly, they didn't have time to be real, to be one hundred percent honest. Especially in eleven on elevens, Dan Arnold got some love. They ran the ball a couple of times. C Mac got a dump off that went to the dirt. I posted that too. Um, yeah, I seen that. I was yeah, like, why did he yeah. run like he caught it? Yeah, he, he kept running because I think he's a pro. He knows what the coaches are expecting, but he threw that joint in the dirt because he had enough time. You know what I'm saying? So, I think. We'll see Terrence come along. I, again, I didn't watch. To answer your question directly, though, I didn't see him in a slot. Okay. Much. Not enough. Because that's to really what you want your rookies doing right now is being able to play without thinking because that means they have their assignments down and the playbook down. I mean, I'm hearing a lot of love for Terrence Marshall. And if that's true, then if he's going to do all this stuff, why not trade Robbie Anderson here now? I think I think not trading Robbie. Thing. You just don't resign him after this year. I mean, you can get something for him. Cody, you're always no, talking but, about uh, last year with uh, Samuel. Yeah, I, well, but see, at that point in time, the Panthers were not going to make a playoff push, and we were going to let Curtis Samuel go anyway. So my mindset was, why not trade that man and get some value for him instead of letting him go for nothing? That's um, Carolina anyway. What happened this year? I mean, maybe it's, it's way too early to start talking about trading, though. What yeah. I will say is this. Uh, I think that the uh, preseason games are going to be really important for us. 
Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, we're oh, really yeah. seeing these guys in some live play. I know in years before COVID, it's kind of the popular thing to, like, poo-poo the preseason because of injuries and stuff. And I understand that, too. But especially when you have a roster like ours. Uh, it's so young and so bubble, much depth yeah. that you have to, you have yeah, to have a preseason really game. Just see bubble them. Time. We really need to see them against some other players, I feel, before we're going to get any kind of indicator on what kind of depth we have, uh, especially on the offensive line. The, this this statement is truer for the offensive line than I think about any other position. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely pumped for this. I think both the lines is true, though. Because, again, we have so many guys who could be there, could not be there. I mean, Christian Miller could have set himself back with sitting out last year. Can, is he going to be able to make the team? Is Haynes going to be able to make the team? I feel like both the lines are sort of like that, and I really think corner is sort of like that too. We have so many, yeah. uh, like, who's the fourth corner? Is Keith Taylor the fourth corner? Is Rashawn Melvin going to be the fourth corner? Like, I feel like all positions is kind of like that. Yeah, Tyler, yeah. let's try this again, man. Can you uh, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. What's up, bro? Yo, what's up, man? I was just at camp yesterday. I don't know oh, who Brian Burns was going up against, but he made that man see Danny Phantom. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm so pumped for Brian Burns, man. And uh, everything I'm hearing is that he's looking like a, a straight savage early in the early in the process, bro. Uh, I read, I read that uh, when Taylor Moten switches to left tackle, Brady or Christensen, the rookie, lines up at right tackle. But when, but when Motrin is at right tackle, it's Cam Irving at left tackle. Yeah. So I, I just think that's intriguing because when we signed Cam Irving, we were always told, well, he's a he he's a, he's good on the right or the left, either one. But. He's not good at no. He's not good at either one. He's, good. he's not good. good. I, don't, guys, I, don't, I don't say good, but you know, really he can. Really he's played everywhere on the line. In the league he's and just not good at, good at one. Low one. average at all of them. Not yeah. good. Yeah. I, I, I don't. I even with Christensen, I seen. Was that y'all that posted the clip of uh yeah. Miller beating Christensen? Yeah, it was on. He was up playing right tackle. Uh, he took a rep at right tackle. I saw him play. I saw him play. Yes, it was right tackle yesterday in eleven on eleven. So I did I did see him play a lot of right. He's taken a lot of right tackle reps. Maybe and again, I, I think we talked about this earlier, but yeah. uh, I think Matt Rule definitely answered this question directly. We don't need to kind of like guess, right? He said that yo, if if the offensive line is weakened by moving Moten to left tackle, then they won't do it. And I absolutely think yeah. You weaken your left line, your your uh your, your offensive line by moving him to left tackle. There's no nobody. Gonna you, gotta let, you gotta let There's your dominant gonna, players be dominant. Going to play as yeah. good as Taylor Moten on the right. I and, can do. I could be wrong, but I just I've had a strong feeling for months now that Taylor Moten's going to end up playing left tackle for us, bro. Because I just don't think. What, what, what other, especially if, if no one believes in Cam Irving, if no yeah. one believes in Brady Christensen, like left tackle is one of the most important spots in okay. football. Like, maybe but Taylor they're just Moten, gonna move. Maybe, they're just gonna well, move. But, but they're just gonna move Taylor the Moten, on the other side. May, maybe Taylor might not be as good on the left as he is on the right. Yeah. But what if he's our best option on the left? Let, let me put it this way. Let me put it this yeah, way. Yeah, but we're not the type of team to be experimenting though. Uh, uh, I think they're gonna experience. I think I don't. I don't agree with that. But I'll say this. I, I'll I'll put it like this. You let your do dominant you want, players be dominant. Do you do you ahead, want do you want an average left tackle and an average right tackle out there, or, or do below you want average, dominant, or a dominant right tackle? And, and you below figure average. it out on the left side. That's no, no, it's, but the problem is the problem is Rashad. It's not a bo- below average left tackle. It is an abysmal left tackle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's below, that's, be, that's uh, below, yeah. below average. I like balance. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. If Taylor Moten, like, let's say Taylor Moten is the only one that can play left tackle worth the damn. Like, it, it might be our only option, even if Taylor is better on you the right side. You can't do that. And, you can't do that. Well, I, 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 I believe we that. did that. Yeah. I believe we did that with Jordan Gross. Jordan Gross was a much better right tackle than left tackle, but we needed him at the time they moved him to left tackle, and that's where he stayed. Well, I but Jordan Gross was an all-pro left tackle, though. <laughs> yeah, he, he, but he became that after they moved him. 
He didn't he didn't enter and the they, league they, as a they left also tackle. Moved, yeah, they also moved him like after one year too. Like this dude's yeah, been dominating I mean, at right tackle forever. Like you don't and and not only that, not only that, we've seen Taylor Moten play left tackle before. This ain't his first road. And it bro. wasn't He's pretty, played left nah, tackle I think, and it, I was think not good. it wasn't that. good. Nobody's yeah, nobody's bringing that up. Like it was not good when he played left tackle. D- different scheme. There's some context yeah. to that, right? Different scheme. I mean, asked to do different things. But and I he's don't had think a couple more years to learn the position. I mean, my point is, is this. If you're going to go out there in these streets and you're going to put out Cam Irvin to get Sam Darnold killed on the blind side. Yeah, just yeah. You better get another quarterback. <laughs> but, to but, but, even, uh, but, even from, but even from what you just showed, y'all showed it yourselves. It's not like Brady Christensen is the man at right tackle either. But again, he's it's not, true, yo. But we don't, it's like you ain't killed. Killed. We we don't have from both sides instead of just kill, getting killed from one side. You we don't, we don't, we don't have the type of team to be experimenting with. Even the clip y'all showed, you're not getting beat by Brian Burns. You're not getting beat by Reddit. You're getting beat by Christian Miller. And by the yeah. way, I, I'm getting some feedback noise. Whoever uh, isn't talking, mute Same. your microphone until, uh, uh, until you're ready to talk. But yeah, yeah, like I'm just you let the dominant players Moulton, be dominant. I think Taylor Moten knew coming into this season that there was going to be a big potential that he would be playing left tackle, and I think he's ready to do that if that's what the team asks. Then he's an idiot. You don't sign that contract if you think you're playing left tackle. Yep, that's stupid. That's, stupid. that's stupid. That's stupid as hell, bro. Nope, that's stupid as hell. Nope. He's the he's a, he's like the six pe- the six highest hell. right tackle. So, so, Let alone so, left tackles. So, so let's ask this instead: Who could be released, or who's available to swing at left tackle, just in oh, case? Cool. Because no, who we got no, now is not there. Go get yeah, Russell Coon, Coon, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. he's the only one out there. Bitcoin. I mean, you made well, maybe, maybe you paid a lot more than you did last year. Are people really like pumped to bring back Ocon? Yes, well, yeah, Cam Irvin. Yeah, 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 but like, I, I mean, but yeah. again, the dude couldn't stay healthy. He couldn't you stay healthy for one? charges either, man. He, yo, he, him not being healthy is a better option than Cam Irvin. Yeah, yeah I mean, back. It, it, when, he, when he games. played, when he played, he actually played very well. Look at yeah. him. When he yeah. was out there and available, he yep. played. I, I would, I would bet my money on that than putting Cam Irving out there. If your options are, if your options. If your options are a Coog, Irvin, and Christian in a right tackle, yeah, you go with a Coog. Man, we should have just got a left tackle, and all of this would have been solved. Bingo. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> in the second round. I agree. In it's the obvious, second round. But guys, it's obvious that the Panthers only thought there was one pure left tackle in this draft, and that was yeah. – and the guy went to pick before us. Yeah. 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 Hey, hey, I've said this on our show before too. Did y'all well, see we that don't clip? don't get Rashad start on his Slater kid. Wait, did y'all see that? I'll have when that Rashad Slater's an All Pro, bro. Rashad, I, I've been telling him, bro. I've been telling him, Rashad. That 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 was a a, a first round, bro. Don't even get me started right now. Yeah, I know. look, my bad. Uh, but what was I even gonna say? Okay, no, I remember what I was gonna say. So I have been saying um, uh, on this podcast. Uh, wait, hang on, I'm getting some weird feedback. I'm good now. I don't. I don't hear nothing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I my, yeah, I got nothing. All right, it's fine. It was something that. But I'm telling you, these websites that just play random ass music when you yeah, get off that page. porn, bro. Yeah. No, nah, bro. Hey, bro, I, don't, I, don't, I don't be on the porn like that. <laughs> but uh, bro, I, I don't forgot there. totally what I was gonna say. Damn it. <laughs> I hate that off. shit, bro. That's what I, I had a good ass point to make too, and that's just gone, bro. Damn, yeah, man. it's Whoa. needed, Brad, but not going into the year as a left tackle. If Taylor Moulton has to play left tackle week one, him and his agent both need to slap each other at the same time. <laughs> yep, he left money on the table. If that's the case. That's stupid. Because there's no that. way I'm going to be the sixth highest paid right tackle and you going to play me at left tackle. Nah, I should have got some more bread. But what? Do we think if they ask Taylor Moten to play left tackle that it's just going to be like... Nah, I know. Taylor don't. I mean, he he's don't already, have that. He's no, already no, 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 no. He don't have that personality. He don't have that kind of personality. No. He's still do it. But I'm just saying they stupid right. for taking that deal. Well, I, I mean, don't disagree. stupid for signing Cam Irving. Uh, but... You know, that's 
neither here nor there. So. Yeah, but so. so if we brought I back Ogun, what would you guys want to pay for him? Because at the end of the day, I don't think he's worth the price tag that he's going to want, especially given how little he played last year. Well, well, how much do you value your quarterback, right? That's that's. I mean, I mean that at the end of the day, I think I think protection. You got to pay him. Make it make it incentivated, right? Make him make it. Facts. You got to play. You got to yeah. you got to play so many games, like. Make, he's not playing any. He doesn't have any leverage right now. He has zero leverage. You at the crib zero. right you now. Can, you can make yeah. an, an offer attractive uh, enough for him to play. And I think that if you go out there, like fam, listen, all these people getting tried out at left tackle, and the 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 offensive line is fluid. That is not. I don't care what nobody say. Yo, that is not good, bro. It's not no. good. No. It's not no. good. So no. I agree with y'all. Like, listen, I want I want our offensive line to be as good as possible. But right now, it ain't it. And I don't but know what they're gonna do. Move it, move it. Just uh, let me just say this. Let me just say this. Moving, le- moving Taylor Moe into left tackle is not gonna fix our issues. Facts. It's not. I still want to see period. some of those other guys get in there, though. I want to see what uh, what Deontay Brown can do. I want to see what David Moore can do. You know, again, like I understand what you're saying. You're trying to kind of temper expectations. Uh, you know, and again, it's not good to have a bunch of question marks on your offensive line, like. It's definitely not ideal. Um, but, again, that's why I say uh, these preseason games are going to be so important for us just because, you know, we're, we had to see these guys with pads on. Um, hey, let me see if I can add someone else to the stream here. Pantherology, what's up, bro? What's going on, guys? What's going Chilling, on? Chilling, dude. Happy you could join us. What you got for the show, yeah. man? Thanks. <clears throat> I just got done editing a video and putting it up, so <laughs> – Okay. All right, hey man, nice. check out Pantherology on uh, on YouTube. Um, is there any other uh, positions that we're either impressed with? Or well, I would like to hear what? Pantherology's uh, the whole his how he feels about should we move Moten to left tackle? Uh, I just I, I think the best thing to do is, and I agree with you know me and Rashad kind of you know every time I've gone on there we've kind of always agreed on stuff every time I've come on this show and we usually agree on a lot of things. And I, I think that you leave Taylor. I think you usually, you need to leave your best guys at the best position at the end of the day. And if you put, I think that if you move Taylor Moten, because he even said it himself, the whole playbook's flipped. Your footwork is flipped. Your hand motions are flipped. So when you hear a guy say that, it's probably not a good idea. Yeah. Hey, real quick, real quick, go go and look at the the rep that I posted with Taylor Moten versus Hassan Reddick. And if you pull that up, watch Taylor Moten's feet. Mm-hmm. Cody, pull it. Can you pull it up? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me a second. Watch, watch Taylor Moten's feet. Watch his feet get crossed up. When mm-hmm. offensive lineman's feet get crossed up, bro. You if you get bull rush, it's over. <laughs> it's a wrap. Pull it up, bro. And I'm I'm just telling you, you don't. You know, it, Taylor, moving Taylor Moe to the left might be like a, it's like a, a wet Band-Aid. Like, mm. the shit might stick and it might not. And you taking a chance, it's, it'll easy, it'll come off easily, right? So I think, you, I've I just think, always understood it, that you let your dominant players be dominant and you mm. kind of help the other guys. Whether you have to right. chip run, every play, max protect, run. whatever. Watch, look at it, go, see, see his feet get crossed, watch, yeah, go back. Right, Right, right. Keep going a little bit, a couple more frames. Right there. There we yep. go. Yep. You see, you never want your feet to cross, bro. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. it's not it's not good, bro. And no. again, he's still working on it. I want to yeah. put some respect on Taylor. Taylor Moten is a guy is my guy. He deserves all the money that he got. Yeah, but he facts. needs to be a right tackle, bro. Yeah, because I think also at right the end side. of the day, too, at least you have the right side strong. And, I mean, I know the left side's his blind side, and that's more important, but at least we know that Taylor Moe is um, going to do his job. My thing is this. I, I under, and I, Let me be clear when I say this. I'm not disagreeing with none of you guys that think that we should keep him at the right side. But my point is, is that we got – stop, Rashad. My point <laughs> is, is that we got to protect his blind side, yo. Like we have to, but again, out the best way. pass rushers in the league, even Brian Burns himself, they move. It's only one person who's a dominant pass rusher that stays on one side, and that is Cameron Jordan. And Cameron Jordan lines up in front of the right tackle anyway. He's well, not the know, only real good pass rusher that I think does 
really get to pick which side he wants to play on. But when you listen to the good pass rushers, they say, oh, well. Dog, all I'm saying is we got a quarterback that has seen ghosts and his left side (laughs) is blind as hell. And and he's got a weak side on his blind side. The left tackle is probably worse than what we've had over the past five years right now. The dude might be Byron Bell at best. And you already got a quarterback that's sitting there that's already scared on his blind side. You're about to get that man killed. (laughs) <laughs> it's embarrassing that we have, that we got no options, man. That Greg Little. Yeah, I mean, ha, ha, has no, say, just all I'm gonna say is this. Say anything from Greg Little? What, Se- you second you team reps. Second team reps is all. Second team with, with, reps, man. With, with, with all due respect, we don't even have a purely, purely blocking tight end with loads of experience, like the guy we let go to play for the Saints right now. Uh, we just don't have that. So even if you wanted to put a tight end next to your left tackle, unless but you then, take a rookie, you don't have that but guy. Then, but then if you do that, let's say yeah. you do that, right? You make the decision yeah. that mm-hmm. the left side – because they're like what we have to do with Byron Bell's whack ass. Let's say we yeah. just do that, right? And we put somebody on that end. <laughs> I can't <laughs> yeah, stand that comment. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so, so let's say we do that. That, 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 that. Take that down, man. Take, take, take it down. Take, take it down. down. <laughs> take it down now. Take it down. So, hey, the problem, the problem, the problem is, is that now that's going to impact your offense. You now you have yeah, you're right. a guy out there, and now right. you got less weapons and less options. Now you're, you're not right. going to get to see more than three wide receiver sets. We got to right. put a blocking tight end out in them streets. Right. Hey, bro, so should, it shouldn't come down to that. KB don't want to lose no weight. Maybe we bring him on as a left tackle. He's too big. Shit. He's too big. He ain't fast enough. <laughs> well, he's, he's too slow. Right 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 less than anything else. <laughs> so, I mean, oh, all right. So, Rashad and Dave, okay, would you, would you guys – have gone for a left tackle at fifty nine, or would you guys have stuck with Terrence Marshall? Nick, Marshall Nick I would have went. I would have went for a left tackle at nine, at eight. That's why no, I, I agree. Right. I would agree to that. Right I so <laughs> I, you ask, I would have went at, to left tackle as soon as possible. And if, you, if I wasn't sure about left tackle, I would have taken uh, my boy out of Oklahoma State. I can't remember his name. Who said it? Somebody said it. Oh, uh, uh, oh God, Oklahoma State. Time. I can't oh, no. remember, but I would have taken him. He is a great right tackle. I got to look it up now because it's going to frustrate yeah. me. He, he's a great right tackle. I would have taken him ahead of Terrace Marshall. But I think I think I, the, I, I think the I trade backs, I think the trade backs is going to, we're going to, like, we, 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 enjoy, we enjoyed the trade backs as we were doing them. But I think the trade backs is going to cost us when it's all said and done. Now, we got good value where, mm-hmm. where we got Terrace Marshall. But I think if we were still in that original second round spot where we're at, we probably could have gotten a, a potential left tackle or at a minimum a right tackle. Yep. You know what I'm saying? If we they if had any, pushed and created at a certain level. And in combination, like I, there were three players I would have been happy with. And we got one of them, and that's JC Horn. The other one would have been Justin Fields. And the other one was Rashawn Slater. Because I, I think that either three of those guys. Uh, a case can be made that we needed an upgrade at that position. So I was really high on Rashawn Slater. Um, again, man, like we have so many guys on, on the team uh, who are playing tackle, but, you know, I feel like the easier access point for those guys, if someone is going to step up, it's going to be on the right side than being on the left. Like who's going to step up and be a, a starting left tackle that's worth the damn if not, we're going to be putting the tight end on the left side of the line on seventy percent of our offensive snaps. Like yep. that, that's yeah, not already it's going to happen. That's I, it's I know it's, not it's going to happen, and that's that's a situation that they created themselves. They could have avoided yeah. this, they didn't. So now they have to live with the consequences. It yeah. is what yeah. it is. At this point. Yeah. So you're mm-hmm. not you're not, and and people have to understand we're not about to go out and get an elite left tackle from anywhere right now. No, no, you're not going to get it. Yeah. You got no. this. We're with what we're with right now. That's it. Like you're gonna get marginally better, maybe you bring in Okung, that'll get you again wet band aid. It ain't gonna help you. You need a long term solution. I've been saying it for a long time. Rant over. So what do we have for cap space, anyways? I mean, last I heard, we had like twenty four mil. Yeah, I think we're still there at the twenty four mil right now. We're we're saving it for Xavier and Howard. Yeah. Well, <laughs> let me ask one more question. 
Not doing it. Don't 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 mad don't mind me, man. I ain't playing mad in a decade. Don't mind me. Stick with your fantasy, David. No, I shouldn't. <laughs> hey, look, man. <laughs> look, man, I, I'm giving y'all fantasies. Let me be. You know what ain't happening. I'm just uh, having yeah. fun because everybody thinks we're gonna get a left tackle. On, 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 Madden, on Madden, Taylor Motion plays like a stud on the left side. Yo, I tell you what though, yo, Sam Darnold might need some damn Motrin if uh if they move him to the left tackle. I tell you that shit. He's gonna need some no matter what. It doesn't really matter with our O line. So over the cap has us at uh Bro, over twenty three million. Like dog. My thing is this, man. We got a quarterback who's never played a full season and we ain't got no damn left tackle for his ass. Yeah. No, That's yeah, my I mean, problem. Mm-hmm. I keep yeah. left a team who left a team with no O line, and and we, now they have one. That's the irony. They now they got great, one. They have a they have, one. Now they paper. got one. On then paper. they have a better left tackle than we do now. They do. Yes, they did better. last year too. <laughs> Not even I bet close. Way better. <laughs> Back in the well, when we hired a GM who came from a team who really didn't who didn't we'll invest the in their offensive line to start with. Yeah, I mean that's the reason why Russell Wilson was throwing a fit. You know, but yet we're going to go hire a GM from a team who doesn't have a strong offensive line to start with because it seems to be unimportant to them. Did y'all remember that Panthers Confidential episode where they said they had Brady Christensen ranked as a second round guard and yeah. a third round tackle? Yeah. Yep. yep. Hey, man, put the, that J, put the 89J subs comment up real quick. What, that one? Bro, I've been saying this, bro. Going back to last year when y'all was shitting on Teddy, I've been saying it since then. Shit. Nobody was t- y'all said the offensive line was straight. No, what? No, no, no. we didn't say it. No, 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 We said it looked straight. better than 2019. Yeah, we yeah, said it looked better than 2019, line, but it's never been line, great. Line, I've never liked the offensive line. The offensive line was just as good that, like, the past three then why, years, then why is Teddy getting all this heat? The then why did Teddy get all this heat? Because y'all better get Teddy better get yeah, Sam that same heat. That's what I'm saying. Bro, but a lot of that wasn't. Questions. But it wasn't just on the offense. Teddy's line. limitations no, no. is Teddy's yeah. limitation. Like yeah. I tell y'all every time y'all say that. Yeah, I can have listen, the listen, best five offensive linemen in the league, and Teddy just not gonna have an arm strength. Yeah. And, and the other thing that we all we got now we got Sam Darnold who does have the arm strength that couldn't throw the long ball as good as Teddy. Is he going to throw more than Teddy? From, 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 from an efficiency standpoint, Sam has a way Teddy, better okay. long ball it than Teddy. Look, it might look, it might look better. It might look good, but it ain't accurate. Yeah, we're just throwing five yards underneath. Well, for all honesty, Will Greer's got a good arm to throw a deep ball. He might not get it there as far as where you want it, but. Yeah, oh, like a- I don't give a damn about a long ball if it ain't getting to my damn receiver. <laughs> that long ball don't mean shit to me. But when, but 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 even but Teddy at his best, been. even even Teddy at Louisville was never that big arm guy. Right, never. Yeah. But he didn't have to be. Yeah. He yeah, didn't but, have to be. And again, because like he had Vaughn. He had uh, who was his he receiver? Last year. But but the thing with Teddy, man, don't get me wrong. His play was t- his play wasn't great, and you can put that on the offensive line. But the thing that all of us hate about Teddy was the fact that he wouldn't own up to his shortcomings. Yeah, right. And, and if he, he had, everybody else. okay, that's yeah. I mean that's that's fair. That's fair. But I say this that's a couple that's couple like things. That's like Benjamin shit. Yeah, couple couple <laughs> things though. Couple things. Again, I'm at training camp. That was a lot, funny, Jay. Still, a lot a lot of underneath stuff. Okay, there's a <laughs> again. I I try to tell y'all this last year too. It's but that's Joe Brady's offense. offense. That's, it's, it's a, that's my point. A, that's my point. Mixture. Teddy's gonna do what he's asked to do. And again, I agree. Teddy was hesitant to throw deep on some. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying that that's not true because that was true. Hesitant to throw. There's some guys open deep. He could have hit. 100 agree with that. But the, the this is the offense, right? Quick passes, and it's partially due because of a shitty offensive line. I said that same thing last year. He's gonna be not gonna even that. If you watch Joe Burrow quick. at his, if you watch Joe Burrow at LSU, it's a mixture of. Yeah, getting the ball in my the athlete's offense, hands, the and Teddy, we never had the quarterback. Does and Teddy win the starting job this year? I don't know. No. Maybe. No, no, yeah, he's, he's winning the starting job this year. Yeah, I, I say this. Too. Already talking no, about no, 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 no. I'll say it. All right. He's winning the starting job this year. If he's, he's not being out, Drew Lock. I don't think so. I'll put a bet on that. Hold up, and I say this. Let me. I'll take that back, buddy. All right. Let me say this real quick too. I say this real quick. 
I've been to every training camp practice, every one of them. Haven't seen one lick of red zone work. I leave it. I leave it at that. <laughs> I leave it at that. I seen CD Lamb. Bro. I seen a whole bunch of dudes caught some nice catches in the back of the end zone. I saw Cam and them working in the end zone. Yep. I seen it from every other team. I've been to every practice. Ain't seen a lick of red zone work. Matt, I'm just Matt Rule's always that, said he don't, he don't, he don't think that's important. Granted, that's what he, he said. He don't think that's I'm important. Just that's what that. he said. But but what was our efficiency in the that's red zone? That's not what he said. That's not what he said. That's what he said. That's not what he said. Bro, bro. That's not what he said. That's not what he said. What he said? No, 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 no. Honestly, what he said was. We go on a different schedule than the rest of the league. We don't work on red zone necessarily on the so same day. Has that worked? How far that has gets you that last? worked? Has that worked? Did but that also, help us? Show all that Did it improve over down, the year? You gotta call. Hey, we gonna if we gonna keep it a buck. You gotta keep it a buck. Gotta keep all it the way above. No, but all I'm way. just telling you that that was what he said. So he was. I forgot what it was. But was that it dude, dude, did it? I like did I was didn't work like. I think he was like, the rest of the league does red zone on Saturdays. We do red zone on Fridays. Or it was something like that. Hey, I was here. What's today? What's today? Sunday. We need What's to today? practice for the game. Today, Friday, ain't it? Bro, we're yep. going to practice hey. the red zone, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a break, y'all. Bro, I'm just telling you. No, if they don't do it tomorrow, they don't do it tomorrow in pads. I'm just telling y'all what I'm seeing, bro. cards. In the first two days of training um, camp, bro. Cody, that's, it's, that's it's cool. Other really teams early. are. Cody, that's cool, but I'm just telling you what I saw, okay? I saw the Cowboys. Well, we you know what Cam catch? doing in the red zone. Cam you running see that in the CD red Lamb zone. catch in oh, the yeah. back my of the man, end zone? My man Rashad oh, yeah. out here reporting, and y'all supposed to be deciding. Y'all ain't deciding the way it should be. Y'all need to be consistent up to in tell the street. You, I'm just trying to tell you what I'm seeing, Cody. I'm out in these streets. And if we was if we was practicing red zone, I would be like, yo, you know what? We practicing red zone. I would have captured the film, bro. I ain't seen it, and I see what, other so what, teams. What, what you think that is? Why? why is I don't know, I, they did, bro. So I can't like, tell you. Like, is that a philosophy? Like, nah. The All I'm gonna zone, say is this: Teddy, the 50, like, Ted, uh, my that? thing is this: Teddy slandered the hell out of the coaching staff because they didn't practice red zone like that, and it seems like nothing's changed. So he's gonna stick to his guns, and if the well, what I will improve, say is, then it's gonna look bad. What I will say bad. is, what I will say is, Teddy, don't think that you cam and try to jump over the Green Bay defense, whether you worked on red zone or not. Uh, <laughs> right now, it's 50 50, apparently, with the QB competition in Denver. That's what I've heard. I you think you lost it already. Teddy is about to win that shit. You don't trade for Teddy if you ain't going to get that man a fish. Teddy is going to win that. You are giving him a fair shake. And by the way, the way, the way, the way guys, the Green Bay. by the way, guys, just to be clear, if you want to talk about something, you want to talk about it's always Teddy's damn fault. Drew Locke's best game was because our defense Smack couldn't us. stop a damn COVID virus and shit. Couldn't stop a cold, a flu, the Rona. They couldn't stop shit. And Drew Locke had a perfect quarterback rating against our defense. Well, Denver is going to look – Denver's Teddy's offense is going to look better anyway sure because they didn't court on Sutton day. I mean, touchdowns is damn sure it didn't help against the Devils. But look, we're, we're bringing up old stuff now, man. I'm at, I'm at the fun. point, bro. I, well, I'm that's just right fun. now. No, it I know, fun. man. But look, I'm just, I'm thinking. Cody about like, to ban Teddy our, Bridgewater name off the show. If our <laughs> offensive line. Well, we already banned really 52, so it ain't a big, big deal. Of a problem. If it's really going to be that big of a problem, uh, could we see them rolling Sam Darnold out more? Like trying to get him outside of the but pocket Cody, and, and Cody. maybe move his move Man. his mobility. Cody, that's Rashad, what they did today. The I'm just telling you, Cody. I'm that's telling you, what that's what they Teddy. did today. They did that today, bro. Yeah, yeah. all it was yeah. was play action. They, they were running play action, and the quarterbacks were running for their damn life. Again, pads and shorts. Mm -hmm. Yes, pads and shorts. I agree. Yeah. But it didn't look pretty, bro. It's early. Because Brian but Burns, I, I, I got it in pads. I, in shorts, I'm sure he I was got, moving. I just. <laughs> I just got to keep tell you it something. there, bro. Don't I mean, worry. Tomorrow, right there, tomorrow, though, they click clacking tomorrow. They no, click not. clacking tomorrow. No, they're not. No pass. Oh, reports were saying that they were going to they're going to use they're going to play in pass tomorrow. No, they don't play. Pads. Pads. I, yeah, I don't think they play their pads until what? Next Monday? week. Next week. Next week. Oh, yeah, it's it's next week. week. What day next week? I think. 
I'm guessing. I think it's um it's either Monday or Tuesday. I don't know the days because it's it's like it's a funny thing. It's like the the sixth day, or it's like the fifth day of practice. Mm-hmm. But I think the fifth day of practice is like our sixth day, like te- of camp. Technically, I don't I don't know the exact. I don't know what it's either. Like Pop Monday. Warner, anybody who played Pop Warner, yeah. there, you can't just come out there and pass. You gotta yeah, do the it's, condition. It's it's, Mon- <laughs> it's Monday or Tuesday. I don't know Monday or Tuesday. Who starts at free safety? Or states to safety, uh, Sam. No, Justin Burris. Burris. Probably Burris. Bur- it'll be Burris, Burris and Chan. Yeah. Burris. Matt Rule got a big question on Justice Burris. So I kind of want to get y'all's take, and I want to hear this. And I actually yep. kind of did this in my um, a video today that I just posted before I came on here. Um, I was reading some articles because I read a shit ton of articles, and. Um, Today, they said in this article on Cat Crave that Matt Rule is telling Sam Darnold to focus more on his mechanics than trying to be a leader. And that kind of bothered me a little bit. Um, I don't know how, I mean, maybe I'm overreacting, but I feel like you, at, you know, you learn your mechanics and the basics in high school. And I mean, obviously, he was good enough to get recruited to USC. He was obviously good enough to get, you know, come into the NFL. So, you know, I feel like those are. I don't know. I just feel like that. That's that. That bothers me a little bit. I mean, this is what I want to say. It's for every quarterback. Hold on, hold on, one minute, because I really feel strongly about this one, especially over the past couple of years. Right, that jump that we saw Josh Allen take in year three had everything to do with him going back and changing the fundamentals of his footwork, and it used to be taboo, like. You know, if you're a quarterback in the NFL, if you're dealing with your footwork, more than likely you're a lost cause if you haven't mastered that already. But I think we're learning that that isn't true now. And especially if Sam never got that kind of coaching up in New York, yeah, I do want them to work on all the fundamentals that Sam wasn't necessarily getting brushed up on when he was in New York. Because a lot of guys take that for granted that these guys are getting that kind of coaching. And they might not be consistently. So I have no problem with it. Um, I think the whole leadership aspect, Sam has to do that himself. No one can tell Sam to be a better leader or when to, you know, to be the hoorah guy for the football team. Sam has to figure that shit out on his own. And he has to earn the respect of his football team. And he does that by being accurate. And having a master of his fundamentals, so well, he, I have no really problem with that in theory. Agree. And he told him really to lead by example, and not really having to lead with your words. Because yeah. I don't really like the rah rah dudes, but you messing up your assignments all the time, aka yeah. Shaq Thompson. But we're not gonna talk <laughs> about that. Yeah, you know what though? You know what though? I think that that shit didn't need to be done publicly though. Like I feel like that's something. True. And again, yeah, we could. I agree you with go that. back and be the dead horse, yeah. but you shouldn't have did that shit publicly, bro. Because at the end of the day, you you making your quarterback. And again, we've seen this in the past. Nobody want to talk about yeah. it, but we've seen this happen before, right? We don't we don't want this situation to be played out publicly because because guess what? Guess what we saw today? Guess who was the first person out? Sam Donald. Sam Donald. Guess Sam who Donald. wasn't the first person out the day before yesterday? Sam Donald. It wasn't Sam Donald. Okay, so like I feel like yo now Sam Donald's feeling this pressure. To go out here and 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 do this, and then truth be told, when he but, got out but, there, hold, but on Dave, the real same, quick, hold on, Dave, real quick. Before truth right. be told, when he got out there, he wasn't working. He was around. waiting. Yeah, the they, they were just yeah. sitting around <laughs> waiting. Yeah, he was waiting. They wasn't doing nothing. They 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 got up and started stretching. Maybe like 15, 20 minutes after that, uh, so he didn't do nothing. Uh, and then, but My, I will say, I will say this real quick. Yesterday, uh, he did stay after late because they had a couple uh, snap issues yesterday. Paradis, there was a yeah, I thought you said it. Yeah, and uh, he did stay at the practice. Paradis and uh, and Sam Donald, they worked on the snaps, so I do appreciate that. But I feel like it only came at the behest of your coach throwing you at your ass under the bus, and I feel like that shouldn't have been done publicly. Yeah, yeah. no, but I think I think, I think, I think, I think is, that's it why happened. it bothered me the it most. Happened. Not even the fact that he it was saying happened. not being a leader. I think it was just the fact that he put put that out there publicly, uh, like you were saying, but. Um, I also heard today that after practice he was throwing, uh, you know, to DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson after practice today too, right? Well, that wasn't. It was during practice. Oh, but he it was it was kind of practice was kind of over. They were doing some 
they were doing some um some 11 on 11s with the mm-hmm. second and third teamers they mm-hmm. pulled the the starters they pulled Robbie Anderson Terrace Marshall DJ Moore and Sam Donald it was just them four and they were throwing to each, uh he was throwing to them but okay. so it wasn't technically after practice after practice his ass was gone okay so he wasn't the last person technically Brian Burns it was Jeremy Chan Brian Burns uh and JC Horn were the last folks that I saw leave and okay. I was out there as late as possible. Late as I could. So man, <laughs> let me tell you something, man. I think this says, I mean, it probably says about his ethic down in. I mean, I think he's trying to turn it around. Bro, I'm there, fam. Like, how you going to tell me? Fitter ass ain't out there. I'm there. I'm out there, bro. I'm telling you. He was not out there first. Will Greer was out there first. The first, the first day, Will Greer was out there first. Second day, <laughs> he was not out there first, bro. I promise you. He was out there first two days. And you probably got go, go, you pro- go look at the go look at the damn oh, look um, at the tape. Go look at the uh the um it's Panthers funny. shit. They put it on the Panthers joint. Look who's coming out first today. Hold oh, all cameras on Sam Donald. Bro, I'm there. I report facts. I don't report BS. Don't it does like seem kind of scripted. It, it like it definitely Well, dog, seems- because oh, the thing is when your Damn coach wasn't. when your coach put your coach chose to call you out on the fir- after the first day of practice, calls you out talking about what the expectations are. Called you out, knowing that you didn't show up first the first damn day, and then second day all of a sudden you there, you in there. So like you can't. And we know we know them guys. That's 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 the that's the practice all American guys. You you doing extra. Everybody else going fifty percent in practice. You going a hundred percent to look good for the coaches. Anybody who play football for real know them dudes. And yeah, if you doing it just because your coach wants you to, I have always felt like anyway, you can get the work done when it's time to do the work. The whole people acting like, oh, I stayed eight hours after practice to watch state. Like, if you doing that much, come on now, I don't believe you yeah, really. But the, but the thing is, is, but the thing is, is, the quarterbacks, the quarterbacks that are the first one in, the last one out are the ones that revered, like the Peyton Mannings, the the the, Tom, the Joe Montana's, Tom the the Tom Brady's. Brady's. Yeah. Those Cam are those Newton. guys. Like if Cam Newton. Cam and even then, if he and if he Say wasn't, that name, Cam and they would, and then if he wasn't, they would let him ask. No, like, yo, he should be here the first way here. Like, mm-hmm. if he don't be the first guy out there in New England, yo, they're gonna freaking crucify his ass. Just, just <laughs> yeah. real quick, just to address these comments because you actually got to be doing work though, not just being in the building no, because you're being in the building. Yeah. Being there ain't <laughs> yeah, there. Oh. Yo, so I, I see, I see the, I see these comments right, and they're talking about. Yo, oh, he was there a couple weeks. He was the first person out a couple weeks ago and all this. And he was, bro, if it, if that was the case, then why the hell would Matt Rule would say Matt it? Would Matt Rule say it, exactly. Yeah. If that was the case, then why would he come out and say it? He said it for a reason. And then the next day, he's there. This dude is the first person out. Like, oh, come on. Like, are, we, are we doing this? Mm-hmm. Are we doing this? And Rashad, point, and, Rashad, and Rashad point is perfect. That if you're out there and you just standing around waiting on everybody else to come out, that's not the same. Now, if Rashad would have came in here and told me, hey, he had DJ, Robbie, Terrence all out there with them, and he was throwing routes before practice, that would be more impressive to me. Not that you was just out there first to be out there first. <laughs> well, again, it's going to take some time for – Sam and the receivers and everybody to get on the same page. Again, I'm telling y'all, I am not going to overreact yet. It's very <laughs> possible that we might have to hit the hit the panic button, but I really don't what, think man? we're there yet, especially what, knowing man? that a lot of these earlier drills, they do favor the defense and like we're That's really not we're, we're really not seeing a lot right now. So right. Uh, again, man, I'm not you know, well, I understand that this offensive line is in flux. And that's what I was saying earlier. If, if, Burns, modest, if, 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 if Brian Burns be moving with pads on, imagine him in shorts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it is, uh, the, Cody, just a just to push back on what you said, just one, one thing you said, yeah. you said a lot of the drills are, are tailored towards the defense. Those one on ones with the DBs are tailored toward the offense. No, no, yeah, that's where you see the true. offense. That's where you see the offense shine, and that's right, where you right, see right. the deep pass. I, so I just wanted to, to clarify. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was talking about uh, like D line, O line. Yeah, for that, sure. That, that for sure. Always, always. For sure. Favors, yes. uh, favors the defense Agreed. too. Agree. And by Agreed. the way, even that, uh, I was even impressed with uh, J C Horn uh, on that play from Sam to Omar Bayless. Like up until the very end, J C Horn was in phase. Like he was. Right in his hip pocket. He wasn't. Yep. He, I mean, he wasn't burned. 
uh, like uh, I've seen other DVs on this team get burned before. So, uh, you know, and I'm, everything I'm hearing is that, uh, you know, his ball get off and the way he jumps on a route is just nightmare fuel for opposing quarterbacks, man. Like I'm, I, I, I'm still on that defensive rookie of the year train. Yeah. Um, but uh, and even that man, play with Omar, I mean, he didn't yeah, put his hands yeah. on him at all. Hey, but um, I wanted to talk no, he about did. Uh, he did a little bit right at right like five yards out or so. If you look back at the tape, you can see him getting a little handsy. Yeah, yeah but I'm talking right. about he gave him a free release though. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So we haven't spoken about the linebackers yet, uh, and that's something that CJA has been wanting us to talk about. Uh, how are we feeling about this position right now? Um, again, man, year. like uh, Denzel Perriman is in the news for the vaccination shit. I'm just really not not interested, not wanting to talk about it, bro. Uh, unless it's like some big deal, which I don't think. All I'm going to say is, if that man tests positive for COVID and start passing that shit around, that's his ass. They're getting on Lamar Jackson's ass right now because of that shit. Yep. This is the They're getting on to everybody's COVID. ass about that vaccinated. shit. No, but the thing is, if you're vaccinated, you might you'll get a different pass versus if you're not. Oh yeah. Because yeah. you're going to get a different pass if you're vaccinated. And you catch that shit versus if you're not. So if you out here not vaccinated and you out here catching the roller and you spreading this shit around, it's not going to look good for you. you call hey, the players. Bigger not, players. Everybody knows that at this point, though. It's not something Denzel yeah. Perriman don't know. It's not yeah. something that anybody don't know. Like That's what I'm saying. Everybody has made their choice. Okay, this has been going yep. on for a long enough time that it's like whatever you decide to do, that's what you decide to do. Like, I, I'm done like giving so much time to this shit. Like, yeah. it's going to be what it is. If there's a fucking outbreak, Ain't nothing gonna stop it. It's gonna happen regardless, man. We're right. one of the it's highest. It's gonna cost us a game. We're, we're and it's one of cost the highest. Chicks. We're one of the highest vaccinated teams that there is supposedly. So it's like we are. I, I'm not. I'm not. And I'm not too worried about it. Yeah. Can, can, just do, can, can go we go back to? I'll go back to the original question: How the linebackers yeah. look? Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> I think I think that I think that Jace. Uh, excuse me, Jermaine Carter, bro. He's looking. He's, talk about he's look. Yo, he's thing. looking great. He's looking good out here, bro. I ain't gonna say great. Yeah. He's looking good out here, and, uh, and he I'm, has I'm been since last yeah. year. I'm I'm, right. I'm yeah. big on the Jermaine Carter train. I'm, I'm proud. Same I'm here. proud of this dude. I'm proud of this dude. Um, and I I'm gonna. I don't want to say that he got it. He's getting number one reps because of pyramid situation. But I think he's getting these reps because of Perryman's situation. Okay, so, uh, I, but I'm happy about it though. I think he's yeah. when, when he's out there, he is taking care of business. He looks good, even in coverage, bro. He had a good rep mm -hmm. on, uh, I think it was Cannon, one of the, one of those running backs. He had a good rep on. Yeah, it was Cannon. Good, I saw bro. that. Yeah, it was. It was good. He looks good, man. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, so is is ready getting uh, reps at linebacker? It's it's that's a. I, I don't want to get caught up in positions, right? Because right. edge rusher, linebacker, outside, it, it's all the same, right? So I don't know yeah. how you ever – I don't know how you want to call it. Three, four outside linebacker, then yes. Um, mm -hmm. He hasn't gotten snaps at middle linebacker, no. Uh, yeah. But that but package – don't want that, no way. Right. That package, uh, that three, four package with Daquan Jones, Brian Burns, Morgan Fox, and Burns and Edge – or Burns on the edge and Reddick on the edge is crazy. I'm, it's, it's, I'm telling you all, man, it's crazy. Yeah, okay. he, uh, I mean, Hassan Reddick is going to be, I feel, a huge boost to our pass rush. Uh -huh. Like, our, our speed off the edge, man, like, that's why I'm so excited about this defense for, mm -hmm. is the amount of speed that we have coming off the edge with Hassan Reddick and Brian Burns. So, it, Weren't again, we, like, last in sacks last year? Um, I don't think we were last. We were no, we were last. Bottom, though, right? We were pretty low, though. Think. Our defense, I think, was ranked twentieth or something like that. Yeah, but that's because we had no yeah. what? We had nobody in double digits. Yeah, yeah. How many rookies did we have playing defense last year? Yeah, seven. <laughs> but our defensive backfield was such a problem too, man. It's like we couldn't cover shit. So uh, you know, I felt that's why I said I, I felt like that's why Phil Snow was making us run more of those. College style defensive formations is those 23. Three, three. Yeah, I mean, so I'm just like, I, I, I'm excited for what this defense can do now because of the pieces that we've added. So, Rashad, 
So how did the uh, how did the backup QBs look? Oh, they uh, that's a whole nother topic, bro. EJ. I don't <laughs> think we want to go there because if uh -oh. Sam Donald goes down, bro, we are in trouble. That's all uh -oh. I'm gonna say. It's not really? all that bad. It, we're, it's not pretty, bro. Oh. It's not pretty. It's not pretty. I mean, Neither do y'all think that we're going to end up keeping – like, I know they were talking about – like, there's been talk that, you know, obviously Sam Darnold will be the starter, but are we going to be going with, like, two quarter, just two quarterbacks or three quarterbacks? I think Matt hinted at that today, though. He, he I think he, he said something about, oh, right. he might keep two, we might keep three. I don't know yeah. if it's going to – I think we need to get – I think we need to get a real backup here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, these guys ain't it. Who? I Garden Minshew. I would I I'd go after Garden Minshew if I if I he's not gonna be great for Garden now, aren't you? He won't, that, play, he, he won't be a backup. He's no, already that, said that he won't be a backup this I year. I can tell you right yeah, now. He'll be a backup. Be out Trevor <laughs> he'll be a backup. In his mind he is. Didn't he say that the other week? Oh, yeah. He yeah. ain't took a shit in weeks because he ain't no, and he's not ain't gonna be he number two. Number two in an option. He did say that. Yeah, but that's why I'm like, he's not, he's not serious. He's but honestly, that, with Sam Donald's confidence level at where it's at right now, you can't trade for anybody who could be a threat to him. I agree with that too. That's the hard part. Yeah, because I, I really agree with that. But who I would really you do. even trade for anyway? Like who's I'm not trading there? for anybody. I'm I'm a, I'm gonna sign somebody who's a vet. Ooh, who, I, I'm just joking when I say this, but I heard the Debo. Packers let like, go of Blake Bortles. <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. I'm good. Look, man, I listened to most of the conversation. Y'all talked about y'all talked about Pyramid about how Jermaine Carter's getting that. Days over there, like me, days. myself, and I with his Day Law Soul shirt over there. We no, no, no. I heard everything. I heard everything. I'm just all I'm gonna say is I agree with what was said. I think the run is going to affect more positions than you think. But, uh, yeah. And as for the quarterback, dog, Donald's our guy for the next two years. If we move out right. of Donald within one year, Rule ain't our coach next year. No. All we right, so who do you think? Donald Rule's within available. the next two years, guys. Matt Rule is not on the block this year. Bro. Been to, hey, you. don't listen to Dave, man. He was trying to get rid of, he <laughs> been trying to Matt get rid of, Matt Rule. No, I've been telling this no. to people too. My, point, Rule, my point is this. Matt He's, Rule is don't listen not to, man. Mute on his the mic, block, man. <laughs> mute his not mic. Not at all. <laughs> don't mute my mic. <laughs> I ain't, gonna do you like that. I ain't going to do you like that. Dude. No, all right. So answer my question. <laughs> now, I, now, let me be clear when I say this. I don't see us going these records that I'm about to name. No, nah, shit. If we go – I'm, I'm going to ask a question. If we go 3-14, and 14, <laughs> rule survives. Dave, it's not happening, it's man. Stop no, it. No, shut, up, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. No matter what. He, he, he survives at least one more year. Yeah. yeah one more yeah. fucking way. Yeah. No way. Yeah, no way. yeah, he does. No because way. if we're that bad, that's on Sam Darnold and our defense not taking the. No, you ain't gonna let that man get a chance to get a third quarterback. Why not? Why not? We're no. getting that man a seven-year seven contract. He ain't going. How much would that buyout be, bro? That man went I don't think it matters. Man. That man. I don't think the buyout matters though. Tepper got bank. I don't think Tepper got the money, bro. That's very but, true. But I don't think. I don't think. I don't think we're gonna be the Lakers. I don't think we're gonna be the Lakers where we paying two, three, four coaches at one time. We'll pay two. We not. We'll pay two. We not going. We not going. They've been trying to get rid of Matt Rule since last no, year. We would have to. We would have to. Not, he's honestly, not the only one though. He's not the only one. He wants. Man, he wants. He wants a win total. To me, for Dave. Matt Rule, for Matt Rule to even be a threat to be on the chopping block, we would have to win less than five games. Hey, look. I said look, three. Is, wait, hold up. This I is said a good three. This is a good opportunity for me to go around and get everyone involved. Nick, if we go three and whatever, is Matt Rule being fired? He, he'll he have one more chance the next year, and that's it. If he drops the ball next year and he has a losing record next year, he's gone. Okay, wait, 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 stop, 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 stop. Before, wait, wait, stop, stop. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me ask a question. So now, this man goes three and 14 next year. Yeah. If he goes three and 14, you're like, we're going to be a prime to take a quarterback. You want Matt Rule to take a we're quarterback? Not. We were in prime oh, no, to take I a quarterback did. this year. We didn't. What are we but doing? That's not what are on Matt about? Rule, though, Dave. That's not on Matt Rule. That's on Scott Fitter in our front office. Like Matt and Rule's a part of it, but that's not all on, on him. The and and one thing I want to point out about Fit, okay? He was not the general manager of the Seahawks. He did work in that office, but he was not the general manager. So yes. one thing that we all have to remember is he wasn't the one in charge of. Who they well, pick. well, I'll say this: yeah, I could. He, he's carrying over some some traits that I don't he like. Is. So uh, we can talk about hypotheticals. 
Uh, but I have some things that I don't like that I that, that are a little bit of the same. I'm uh, right there with you, Rashad. Right yeah. Yep. Zach, Trust me. That's the but one. Did you mind the trading back, though? Wait, but hold on. Zach, I want to get everyone on this because this is like, I mean, Dave's saying that he's on the bubble. Like, this is this is a make or break year for, for Matt Rule. I disagree. Zach, what say you? I, I agree with Nick. I think if we went 3-14, and 14, I think he gets at least one more year. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Kevin, is he on the bubble? But it's it's close. Yeah. Is that me? Yeah. Uh, yeah, get one more year. You don't give him a seven-year contract if you not have him. Yeah. That yeah, man is the richest owner in the NFL. That seven-year contract means nothing to him, bro. That's true. Clay, what's well, he just cut three. Teddy Bridgewater after one year. That's true. Bridgewater don't mean nothing to nobody. <laughs> Uh, I think I, I unfortunately I think he's gone. Uh, I think that I you you can get they got rid of Bridgewater within one year. I don't see why they can't do they won't do it to him either. I mean, and they're you know we do have the richest owner in the world. This is like chump change to him. That's true. Yeah. There's no cap it's, for coaches, guys. It's still six million dollars that you paid to the guy over seven years. He why is not going to want to eat that Peter, without rich having rich people. Rich people, rich people don't stay rich. That's, that's, that's his pride. If he fails, right. that's pride. He ain't going to admit that he failed getting that first head coach. This owner's never had a winning season. That's all I'm going to say. This owner's never had a winning season since he bought this damn team. Three He's years, never, guys. It's only been yeah. three years, though. Oof. It's been it's, four it's years. Been relatively long. Has it been four it's already? Been, Wait, what about was, no, three years. Yeah. Three years. This is his fourth year. Yeah, three Rivera years. Okay. Two years that's, and that's, that's, one. That's but no, did, I mean, that's a drop in the bucket relatively. And again, we don't want it to be yeah. 10 years down the road dealing with the same shit, but, oh, yeah. it, you know, uh, again, I, I, I just think it's way too early to freak out about a lot of this stuff. I don't I think like he would be on a chopping block. And the only way that he could be is just – if you believe Joe Brady was that much of a star that you could get rid of Matt Rule. Y'all fell in today's trap, bro. Bro, we're gonna be three and oh, we're gonna win three games in the first yeah. three games. That's what I'm that's about. Why are we, we, we even going so. down? This, I know bro? that. Why are we even going down the road? No, no, I know, happen. I know that. I know that. We're gonna start three and oh this season. That's why you said lose the last four. If we lose the last four teams, we gonna be fine. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Rashad. Let me play devil's advocate, bro. You're saying this offensive line could be a real problem. So no. how, are we go- how are we going no. through and know if it's gonna it's gonna be a problem? We, but we can't how many, be, how many games we, we win last year with, with Teddy Bridgewater? What we went seven and nine, six and six. No, we didn't seven games. No, what was it last year? Five and eleven last year. Five and eleven. I think I think that I think that we're gonna get enough done to win more than three. We're talking three Absolutely. games, bro. What are we talking yeah. about, man? Christian McCaffrey to win three games by himself. Right. We're talking about three games, bro. Like do I do I think we're gonna win the Super Bowl? Hell no. Nah. But yeah. we're gonna do enough to win three games, bro. Mm-hmm. Come on, yeah. like let's. All what are right. we doing here? The sure. first, the first five games of the our schedule is is very yeah. intriguing for us. Like we should win at least the first three, and then the next two get a little iffy. But I think that you could possibly see if they put everything together right now, you could see a five and zero start to this season. And New Orleans oh, yeah. makes I'm, it. New Orleans makes it easier. But I think it also play. has to depend on Christian McCaffrey yeah. staying healthy again. True. I think that's going to have to depend on a lot of that because when we well, my, you look back last year is, when Christian McCaffrey was playing, look how many games we almost won. By the way, the I'm also is, hearing I'm look also how many hearing games reports, that we've won. I'm also hearing many, reports that Zach Wilson up at the Jets training camp has oh, been looking no. bad. He looks very good. Really good. Yeah, uh, good. That, good. That, that, that's what I, that's what I'm hearing, man. And he signed late, just like Sam Darnold did. Yeah, he just uh, signed his contract. Yeah, three yeah. years ago. So this was his first practice. I definitely yeah, agree that we have no reason to not start on fire, like no. the, you know, three and no, four and no. Like I definitely be and, by, that. and by the day, and by the day, New Orleans makes it easier because they players yeah, just keep getting it keep dropping like flies. <laughs> Mike Tomlin. Deontay Harris just got in trouble, so that's 
Now you don't have Michael Thomas, and you don't have Deontay. I just don't understand what these Saints fans think that that Jameis Winston is going to come in there and be great because he got his eyes fixed. I mean, the guy won a Heisman at the FSU and a national championship before he got his eyes fixed. (laughs) That that, you got to remember for the Saints, they brought up, they brought in Chris Hogan, you know, and while he. You know, he was playing lacrosse. He was not even thinking about the league. <laughs> yeah. Trust me. Trust me. I made that argument on Tuesday night. Smacked him, dude. Cody man. remembers. Yeah. I made this argument on Tuesday night. But you still have to you still have to remember the guy was on the pass for a while. He did very good on the pass. And he was he injured when he came. Because of Brady, though. We do it. He got, he, he got injured when he was with but us, though. Chris Hogan's Trust not going to improve. I made that argument Tuesday. But or any other offense in this Double game. Ditchman had 1,000 yards. I'm scared, bro. I'm not, nobody's scared of Chris Hogan, man. <laughs> nah, but nobody's scared up, of Russell Okun. And he was hurt. It's the same thing. If they no, it's not the same. Yeah. It's not the Russell Okun is better than Chris Hogan. Not the same same facts. Yeah, it's it's not not the, if, the, the, if the argument that you're making is that no. you're hurt anyway, so it don't matter. No, that's not then, the argument. I'm, make, I'm making an argument. A healthy Chris Hogan, Chris Hogan on I'm the not field worried, playing though. 17 games. Nobody gives a shit, and he's not changing the game. This is the most thing times that Chris Hogan's been mentioned. Right. No one is scared. <laughs> how old is how old is he? He's like he's 30, gotta be 30, right? Somebody's scared of this dude, bro. Get him out of here. Chris Holden right now is about on Rashad boy level. Him and Brandon Zilstra is hey, like cousins. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, 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 relax. Chris Holden will be 33 this year. Yeah, oh, shit. Oh, no, Chris Holden, bro. Wait, hold up, y'all. We got two more people that we never asked the coach a question to. Uh, Panthers rule. Is Matt rule? That's in your name, man. Rule is in your name. Do you think? Yeah. Is Matt Rule on the chopping block if he has a bad year this year? Uh, no, but even if we have a top five pick next year, I wouldn't get a quarterback. I'd get a left tackle. But that's me. Mm, so, that's but there's no. Pick. I know he's he, he'll be here next year. I believe. We might, we shout might out, shout out Evan Neal. Hey, uh, my, get him. my my. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got yeah. Cole on here. We haven't had Cole go yet. Cole, is Matt Rule on the chopping block? No, if we have a bad year this year, he's he's still gonna be here next year. He's smartest not. kid in the room. <laughs> All I'm gonna say is this: I like Cole. If he has a bad year, we better take a left tackle because I don't think he like. I Absolutely, could, he's got to take a left tackle. He has Absolutely. to take, a, and I think that, but I don't think the fan base would be happy if we take a left tackle. They'll probably say, "Let's go get, get Sam another Howell. quarter." They're probably gonna say, "Get another quarterback" because Sam Howell had a bad like, no, year, and then all that is, is the same thing every time. My my big thing about Rule not making it after this year, if he has a bad year, it boils down to whether or not they want to go with another quarterback. That's mm-hmm. what it boils down to. Like in my yeah. opinion, I don't see Rule surviving if we go get a third quarterback at this point. That's mm-hmm. just my opinion. Sam. Ain't happening, bro. There'll be a new head coach if Sam Howell's our quarterback. And that's my point. That's all I'm Sam saying. Sam Howell's not a franchise quarterback. What about his I don't know what to anybody who's not a Clemson quarterback. Hey, but this has nothing to do with Clemson, bro. He's like six foot one, and bro, he's he's not mobile. He's not like a top. Sam Howell can move. You hate on anybody who's not a Clemson quarterback. We yeah, know. Nothing to do with Clemson, we know. Bro. Y'all had like two quarterbacks in the last hundred years. We, we Trevor Lawrence You're and Watson are good. Completely different. To, hey, look, yo. my, my point is this though, but if we end up needing both of them, then it's like the quarterback still wins out and we're still kicking left tackle down the road. If Sam Darnold doesn't work out and we pass on Justin Fields, you're going to tell me that if another quarterback falls in our lap uh, next year, that we're not going to take them over a left tackle? I don't well, believe that at all. You don't well, think, we uh, just skipped Justin Fields, so I don't know about that. But, hey, hey real quick, we about, I'm about to drop because we about to go live on, on PNP real quick. Yeah, man. Talk some more training camp. So, Dave and I about to drop. This was fun, bro. Yeah, man, um, for sure. Good, good yeah. stuff. Appreciate y'all. Cody, we out. I might come back next Friday. Hey, Hopefully. I appreciate y'all, man. Y'all check out PNP. Uh, yeah. Hey, man, until next Friday, bro. All right, bro. Take right, it easy, guys. Yo, 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 it peace, easy. y'all. Yeah, man. I'm a. Uh, hey, how about that? We got another person to come in just as soon as they drop out. QT, what's up? <laughs> this man really in a grow house. QT, what's up? What's <laughs> in? <laughs> <laughs> what's up with y'all motherfuckers, dog? <laughs> what's good, bro? 
We got Snoop Dogg in the house. Yeah, hey, can you hear me? Y'all just gonna be quiet about there? Yeah, can you hear us? Can you hear us? Yeah, hey, uh, QT, you're going to have to come back in, bro. Your audio is not working. But, you know, e e even if even if something happens, and I don't, still don't believe it's going to happen, but what people don't realize, if, if if you hire a new quarter, a new head coach, most head coaches want to do their own people. So you're talking about half the people may be gone because they may not want to do what Rule's doing. You know? And, and yeah. That's that's why I, if we were going to get a new quarterback, it would be I mean a new coach, it would be Joe Brady. Does Temper get fed up and just go after Watson with everything? Well, I hope not. No, I, I don't. I, I like Watson, but I don't. I don't think Watson's going to play this year or next. Please. I, think, I think we need to stay away from Watson if he's got all these allegations against him. It's just going to bring I mean, worse things into the yeah. locker room that we can Oh, God. Him. See, now y'all falling into Cody's trap. But look at Cody's face right now. Cody <laughs> heard Watson, no and he was already ain't getting no a motor. <laughs> I mean, bro, I think if we were to trade for uh, Deshaun Watson, we would have to do it like – Sometime soon, like before yeah. we got to see yeah. who Sam Darnold is as a player. But there's too many unknowns doing that. Yeah. Who are you guys giving up then? You, if you guys want the Sean, who are you guys giving up? You're because giving up. I can tell you right now, I don't want to give up. Any. You're giving yeah, up you're, draft picks. You're, you're, you're going to end up giving yeah. up like a, a, a Shaq Thompson and a uh, – Probably Robbie Anderson, something like that. With That's like, cool with that. Like, okay. 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 Every day. But, but hold on, but they may not want them to. You give they, up they Shaq Thompson. They may want young studs. Whoever his backup is. I see Shaq's getting paid too much for us to trade him right now. Yeah. Yeah, way too much. But that's what they're going to want. They're going to want a good defensive player and a good wide receiver, and then they're going to want, gonna want that at all. Second round draft. They don't want his contract, though. That's the thing. They, the, 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 they wouldn't take that. That would be the trade we would agree to, but they wouldn't take that. Well, they're going to take Sam. Well, then, then we would have to give Sam Darnold a bunch of first round and second round draft picks and then somebody else with Sam Darnold. Yeah, it's, I'm it's, good it's, on just, this it's, too, stuff. it's too much. I don't him. think there's no package that we would put together that we would all like no. that would beat out the no. Eagles. And, and, oh, and then, no, and no. then, and then no, no. he has to agree to drop his trade clause to come here. Yeah. That's true. So as long as, as long as we keep CMC, I'm, I'm cool with trading whatever. Yeah. So you so you'd be willing to give up Burns and Chin? Hell no. No. Uh, so <laughs> that, exactly. no I'm not exactly. I'll give up yeah, Thompson. Just, well, but yeah. they're also saying give up three first round picks. So if we're giving oh, up, yeah, three, it's like you're giving up three first round picks plus then like two extra second round picks in the same draft years too. So yeah, I I mean, have, have, well, they said that they wanted they, they, they that. wanted picks huh. and they wanted players. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no package that we could put together that would be out the Eagles. Or the There's Dolphins. barely any yeah, team in the league, league, I think, that can put a package together. I don't think any of them. The only way, the only way we would get Deshaun is if Deshaun demanded that he had to come here, which I don't think he'll do. There's yeah, no package yeah. that we can put together that would beat the Eagles or the Dolphins. Mm -hmm. No. And let's try this one more time. Q two zero. What's up, bro? Was that? Was that? I can hear you now, fam. Yeah, that's good. What's up, bro? Hey, man, what you think about this uh, this training camp so far, man? I only seen a little bit here and there. I'm fucking, you know what I'm saying? I was working and shit, but until I I just figured I had COVID this morning, so it's like oh, shit. it's kind of rough. I've been chilling, but you know what I'm saying? I, I seen some cool things here and there. I, I didn't like to hear about fucking DJ dropping the ball, though, and fucking Chin getting that pick off of that. You heard about well, that? Well, so I played it earlier. Yeah. We were trying to determine if it was – uh, DJ needing to bring that ball in that clearly hit him on the hands, or if Sam Darnold needed to bring that ball a little bit lower. I think we kind of nah, landed the bullshit. on the hit him in the hands. Ball. You see videos of of DJ yeah. dislocating his shoulder to catch motherfucking balls. You know what I mean? Here and there for Teddy yeah. Bridgewater, especially. You know, and he was doing that in practice too. We've seen this. So how come he didn't do that when the ball got intercepted? Yeah, it definitely needs to come down with it. But, again, I'm not tripping off it too hard just because it's the first spooky, you know, few days of spooky. training camp. 
Yeah, I'm. I'm just. Yep. I'm not gonna freak out about it yet. But I see him as a top ten receiver in the league. Top ten receivers in the league. I do too. They yeah. don't drop. Don't they? Don't drop balls. I've been saying forever nice. that I think DJ Moore has the potential to be a top five receiver in the NFL. He's just yeah, he could had, be top five too. Yeah. yeah, he hasn't had the quarterback play to help him get to that level. So again, <laughs> Julio really would beg to differ though that uh, that yeah, elite right? receivers don't drop passes. Yeah, Julio does drop a lot of passes, surprisingly. That yeah. one in the end zone still gets me. No, I love, dude, that's one of my favorite. That was on my birthday. Of all time. <laughs> that was on my birthday that year. That was awesome. Uh, you remember he dropped it right in the back of the end zone? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, that was pretty beautiful. <laughs> that was pretty beautiful. Hey, man, uh, not all of you were here when I talked about uh, Kelvin Benjamin. I want to hear Q2 here talk some shit about Kelvin Benjamin. <laughs> Hey, that I'm a kid, bro. That's my favorite. That's my favorite jersey, bro. That's the blue Benjamins. You feel me? I got, oh, my, shit. I got the all blue Benjamin, bro. That's my favorite jersey. You gonna see me at at the at the week nine at the at the Patriot game rocking that bitch. You feel me? That's my uh, bro. That's, that's my favorite jersey. That's all I gotta say about him, really. <laughs> hey, you that's can like the jersey, man. I, I just ain't down with that old. Lazy blaming other people bullshit, bro. He's not on my team no more. You know yeah, you're right. He and gets he gets just as much a breath out of me as Cam Newton, you know. Bro, why, why 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 are you always doing this, bro? Why you gotta shoot shots in the hand, bro? If if you ain't on my team, you a op. You know what I mean? Simple as that. Yeah. Yeah. I feel you. I feel you. You know who Straight is up. on our team though? Uh, Sam Darnold. Yeah, I, that Sam Donald is on our team. That is correct. That is correct. Hey, how many of y'all have a uh, cop the Donald jersey yet? Oh, I ain't, I ain't done Not that quite yet. yet. I can't buy a jersey. Uh, I don't. I don't do jerseys. <laughs> if he if he wins in week one, which he should, but if he wins in week one, I'll go out and I'll buy his jersey. But Hell, no, you know wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Who said that? Who was it? That's a jest, though. No, man. Man. the jest is worth a jersey. The worst team we play. Hey, that game is the question. Nah, if, if he beats the Patriots, is that game? There will be. If we problems. beat the Patriots by his jersey. Yeah, if he beats the now, Patriots, if he beats, the now if he beats <laughs> New Orleans for the first time in that's true. No, that's, that's a true. scrub team. That might be more. They don't even got a quarterback. They <laughs> yeah, got crab legs true. and a guy that's a running back or tight end. When yeah. is the last time that we beat New Orleans though? What? 2000. It was 2018, week 17. Damn, it was. Yeah, it was the last time. Yeah, 2000. Uh, yeah, 16. It was one, Damn, uh, bro, where the hell did time go? Shit, Facts. man. Facts. Uh, yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah. Will, will, will Dallas have Prescott back by week four? Yeah, Prescott. Prescott here right now. Got that foot I, yeah, I thought he was going to be uh, ready by the time they started. He's there now, right? Yeah, yeah. he's going well, well, to be ready. He's going to be ready or something. His shoulder. Oh, yeah. He was saying his shoulder was Yeah. Because he's not he's not throwing in their practice now. He's probably not playing preseason. That's about it. Well, Prescott just got the bag, so he don't got to do a damn thing until yeah. nigga, you know, that overrated, Sunday. bro. He's overrated. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't pay like for that. it. Yeah, I wouldn't pay for it, man. It like to me, he's not the type of quarterback. To elevate your football team, and again, not every quarterback is. A lot of good quarterbacks can't necessarily <laughs> elevate a bad squad, but they just paid. They just paid that man out of desperation. That's why they gave him away. Yeah. They, had they no paid other. everybody too soon, man. They paid Derek Carr a ton of money. They paid Matthew Stafford a ton of money. Yeah. Like just because you're the next quarterback up, don't mean you deserve that. True, but I don't know. That's well, the way the market's going. The last time we beat the Saints was 2018. Yeah. And it was the last game of the season. Yeah, Teddy Bridgewater oh, was yeah. starting that game. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and nobody, yeah. nobody remembers that because we don't even count that. They were already in the playoffs, and <laughs> we didn't have shit to play for, and they weren't trying to risk their starters. Yeah, yeah. man, that was a bad Also, higher draft pick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ugh, bad yeah. day, man. Bad we still got Burns out of the deal, so, so it wasn't too bad. Yeah, yeah, that's one hundred percent the truth. That's one hundred percent the truth. 
Um, so, Cody, well, I got so, a question for yeah, you. Yeah, go ahead, man. If Shaq Thompson goes down, who takes his spot? My boy Carter, bro. Do I got He's Carter. Nah, he's on the inside. Like the, the they, inside. They're... That's who, where Shaq is. Shaq's on the inside, too. Nah, Shaq's not inside. They got Shaq playing uh, uh, Sam. As of right now, Frankie Louvu is going to be his, is his backup. I want his jersey. Frankie Louvu is, is on IR. He, he got COVID. <laughs> He was back. Uh, he's on the. He's. I'm pretty sure he's on the pup list because of oh, his on, foot. Yeah, he's on the pup list or something. I what's thought up, he was Pam, back. By the way, what's up, everybody? I need to say hi to everybody. How y'all doing? Uh, yeah. I mean, he's back, but he's not. He's chilling, not. Bro. He's not practicing. He's just chilling. I thought he couldn't practice today because of COVID. Or the COVID stuff, but he'll be back tomorrow. Is what I saw. Uh, I saw that it was because of his foot. He was out there. He was just chilling on the sidelines, though. Oh, what I saw was saying that he couldn't be in team stuff today, but he was doing everything else. He'll be in team stuff tomorrow. I don't know. I guess we'll know when Rashad or David tell us. Probably. <laughs> 704, Charlotte Bound. What's going on, bro? What's up with Charlotte? Hey, man. Uh, so, man, QT, you out in California? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You, you see uh, you see what's legal out here? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I see it, man. And they, and they better not pull us off of YouTube because it's 100% legal where you're at. It's 100% legal. It's 100% legal. <laughs> I got the perfect amount of plants. It's not. It's six plants. You can have six plants, you know what I'm saying, Any anything, anywhere, without a prescription. It's just you have six as big as you want. <laughs> Damn, bro. Those are some six foot five. Those are some... Those are some Cam Newton size plants you got behind you back They're there. They're taller bro. than Cam, bro. I stand up. Look. Oh, he said, put some respect on my plants. Yo, he said, they're taller <laughs> than Cam. It's like, it's like 10, 8 footers. This guy's up here. Yeah, hey, man. So, uh, real quick, um, I'm probably not going to go too much longer. So, I want to go on and ask everybody uh, if they have a player, a specific player. Uh, that they're excited about or that they're more excited about now than maybe they were before going forward. Is there somebody that you guys are amped up on? Uh, I think there's a, I think that not a lot of people are talking about this guy. I know we ha there hasn't been a lot of news about him and I kind of am looking forward to see what he does with this offense. Um, Dan Arnold, tight end uh, that we got out of his own. I really think that this guy who as as physical specimen that he is, and how much of a breakout he had last year for the Arizona Cardinals? I think that we might be be seeing more tight ends, you know, put to work on this offense than we did last year. Dan Arnold is a popular name that uh, that I hear a lot. I of seen him drop a pass to too. I seen that motherfucker drop a pass too. It was wide open across the middle. And that motherfucker dropped that shit. It was perfectly thrown, probably like 15 yards off the line ball. Sam Donald threw that shit perfect. Arnold <laughs> dropped it. So I don't know. Bro, Sam Donald's thrown a few perfect passes and had I've seen that. That's some receivers dropped some balls, man. I've seen, yeah. uh, we showed it earlier, uh, Brown, uh, or no, uh, David Moore was dropping a pass. But again, man, like, I'm not trying to drag these dudes over hot and cold just yet because, like, it's mm -hmm. like three days into practice, man. We want them to fuck be up what now. They do, yeah, oh, it's supposed to be that. Yeah, guy but man, dude, people tagged, are going. Like, people are going to drop passes, man. It's practice, like you know. It's, pra it, it's, it's practice. It's yeah, practice, and it's only day back. what four with a new quarterback. Day three. Yeah. Today we're three. Day three. Day three. Day three. Tomorrow's four. Tomorrow's four. They've been four. throwing to each other. Don't don't try to give them that type of shit. They've been throwing to each other. Dang. As soon as they figured out they're on teams together, they should have got each other's motherfucking number and start building the chemistry. I know. Also, I, think another, I think another player that I like to look out for just real quick is yeah. uh, the Terrace Marshall. I'm looking forward to seeing yeah. what he does. Um, you be on I the have, internet too much, bro. I, <laughs> I've heard. I've heard uh, that. That there has been some rumors that they're thinking about if he continues to stay healthy, obviously, and all that. Since he's a little bit bigger, they're thinking. I've heard that they might be thinking about putting him on the outside and moving Robbie into the slot. I would love that, dude. But that's that's how Joe Brady used Terrace Marshall at LSU. They would put mm -hmm. him on the outside 
and uh, mm-hmm. make him run the post route. They would have a dig route going underneath it, and dude, that dig draws away the coverage. And he's a big body jump ball receiver, that's, man. And I'm hoping but, yeah. that's what happens too, Cody. Yeah, I'm put, with you. I would, I would prefer DJ right to slide, on, honestly, though. I think you mix all of them at all three. Bro, Robbie, well, I think Robbie's yeah, quicker yeah, than his footwork. Yeah, you preach, bro. Just rotate the bitch, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's what I, I – we, we have the talent to do it, man. Uh, we haven't even really mentioned Shy Smith yet. And, that's, uh, good, that's my guy. Yeah, I know. That's your guy. He already apparently made some – Really good one-handed catches in the back of the end zone. I think uh, we're going to see him more in the punt returns, I think, a lot. Probably. Yeah. I like how I've been hearing him from other players. It's not like just an internet thing. I've been hearing other players compliment him. Oh, yeah. You can – I mean, I've been, I've been on Twitter, Instagram, everywhere, just reading a bunch of shit. <laughs> I mean, he never had a quarterback in college. Yeah, nothing in college. Yeah. Oh, I know that. I'm a Gamecock fan, so trust me. Me too. <laughs> I refuse to watch that. Shit. Hey, I was getting hella mad at seven. Five. I was getting hella mad at DJ when he was dropping that shit. What game was that? The, the I think it was the the Chicago game. Oh my god, I was getting hot. Again, man, it's hard to be a consistent receiver when you ain't got a consistent quarterback. I'm not trying to make excuses to DJ. I'm just saying, man, when you got a quarterback. That you know, you're always having to come back to the football or make an adjustment. I think also how much they're probably trying to, they're changing up the system a little bit for Sam. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 100%. We're changing up a lot of things for Sam. And like you mentioned earlier, you know, I don't mind him focusing on his footwork and his fundamentals, like especially if he never got that kind of quality coaching before. Like, shit, better better now than later. Uh, you know, I mean, he doesn't have much time anyway. So it's like, if he needs to make some adjustments, best do it now. And yeah. It's looking so far like that's what he's doing. Yeah. The dude has had six quarterbacks throw to him over the last three years. Okay. Yeah. He, he still he get a thousand out. yards, though. He still get a yep. thousand yards. He did. And that's props on him. But at the same time, it's like, how can you get any sort of consist- consistency whenever you have six different guys throwing to you? Cam Newton, P.J. Walker, Tyler, or K- Kyle Allen, Taylor Heineke, Teddy Bridgewater, Will Greer. Like, how can you get any sort of consistency with that? Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be bad though because if we don't get somebody consistently back there, I have a feeling that you're gonna see guys wanting to be traded. He could be the next yep. Steve Smith. Well, well, did any of you guys catch that Steve Smith podcast with DJ Moore? No. Yeah. No. I, watched, I, 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 watched, I was watching and listening a little bit of it. So one, find that shit. So they brought up Curtis Samuel, how he got his deal with Washington, everything like that. And it was mentioned that they kind of knew where he was going because of the relationship. They never asked DJ if he planned on staying in Carolina. But DJ, he didn't really seem like he was necessarily tied down to Carolina either in the podcast. He didn't come out and blatantly say, oh, yeah, I want to stay in Carolina. He just wanted to get his money. Is that him posturing for that – Contract conversation that he's. Yeah, I was about to say, why would you give up your your high ground in the negotiations? Yeah, I I would have thought that Steve Smith though might have even asked him about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, but who knows? Well, I also think. Remember the way Steve Smith. Uh, ex player shouldn't ask a player that. Though. You know, yeah. Steve Steve might have that mindset of, hey man, you know, play wherever they're gonna pay you. Uh, he did with Carolina. He could have left numerous times. Hey, he ain't going to get paid again if you don't get double-digit touchdowns. I'll tell you that right now. That's a fact. That's a fact, man. He, dude, everyone on our team has a ton to prove, man. Everyone on our team. Everyone on our defensive line, our offensive line. Like, there isn't one player on this football team that doesn't have something to prove. Even CMC. He got to prove he can stay healthy again this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, so... Everybody has something to prove, and that's why I'm hopeful that this team comes out like a team for the guests, man. And I'm also getting a lot of background noise. Uh, I don't know who's got that. Somebody name. playing Trey songs in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me, me. But if, yeah, if I can say, I can say my, my homie, I'm really juiced about right now, it had to be the most highest paid free agent we paid for, if nobody even tripped off this, Hassan Reddick. 
Yeah, all right. And then we that. didn't even come out of pocket that much, which I give Trey Daddy all the utmost respect for. You know, we got this guy who just did, did 15 sacks last year for only $8 million. I feel like that is You're juicing up his numbers a little bit, though. I thought he had 12. 15. 15 sacks. Let me see. Let me see. Let right? Me see. I thought it was. No, nah, I thought it was twelve. No, nah, he, only had, wrong, he only had twelve last year. Was it twelve? Mm-hmm. Regardless, yeah. there's a lot of sacks. He motherfucking and got. He got. Fucking yeah, that's he a bunch of sacks. No, he had a career last year. year. He had a career he's, year. He's year. almost. He's almost pretty much like a, a Burns 2.0. And now we got two of those coming off the edges. You know what I mean? It's not just one where they could overload one side. Mm-hmm. We have two of those coming right now. You know what I'm saying? And that's who my biggest dude is because they can't just they can't just lean the line to one side and they gonna have to pick their poison and it, it, you know he's the he's that missing piece that's making that happen on the defense you know and so it should just open up one on ones all over the fucking board all day long. Hassan Reddick is my dude to look out for. That's a good. Is thing, it concerning man. he did it in a contract year? Well, this year's his contract year too. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> he only got signed this year. This, you know, shit. We ain't got I'm, anything after this. Cody, I'm going to head out, man. I appreciate you having me. I've got to go. I'm going to make some dinner. I'm starving. <laughs> Do your thing, man. Do, I appreciate dude. you jumping on. Right, you later, I'm, I'm, I'm out too, boys. I'll, thanks, thanks for having guys me, guys. See you later, Panther Rule. Peace and love, yeah. Javier. Hey, um... So does, so, it, uh, does anybody have anything, uh, anything they want to add or mention or bring up before we before we get out of here? So real quick, uh, I'm super excited about Burns. I mean, the ooh. dude put on, he's saying 15 pounds of muscle in the off season, okay? And he put on something like 15 pounds last year, too. Yeah. The dude balled out in his first year. He had a little low, low year last year, but I think he was getting double teamed a lot more than he was in his first year. So now that you have a Thon Reddick on one side and you have Burns who just put on basically 25 pounds of muscle over the last two years, dude, it, he's going to be a beast. And Derek Brown up the middle too. Oh, God, yeah. Rick. Yep. Yeah, so that that was going to be the player that I mentioned. Uh, Derek Brown, uh, especially up in the middle. Uh, CJ, I, I, I'm going to get to you. I won't forget. I promise. Uh yeah, I think Derek Brown, you know, you mentioned Hassan Reddick already, uh, 2-0. Him and Brian Burns being such a threat on the outside. Dude, if Derek Brown can take that next step and be that dominant interior defensive tackle, I'm telling you, this defensive line is going to slap fools around, bro. Uh, I like think it's hard... crazy how good he's been doing in the past. The past defense that that's supposedly yeah. been his weakness when, when we drafted him, right? And that he's been doing better than that than run defense. You look that shit up. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was the best. He was definitely a he was a decent pass rusher last year. And honestly, like even the run defense, it kind of gets an unfair rap for. Cause it he got double him forever. Yeah, it wasn't just – and our linebackers were ass, bro. So, it's like there was no complimentary football happening uh, at that point in time. But, uh, uh, Kevin, man, who's your player that, that you're excited to see the rest of this? Uh, I probably already know your answer. But, uh, Smith that, Smith? Yeah. yeah. What's my man? Who? That's your man. All right. Smith. Smith. Oh, shot. Okay. I was hoping we drafted him. We did that's, yeah. Me too. I yeah. really wanted that too. Yeah. Is that? Did you? Uh, did you give us a player that you're uh, excited about? Um, I'm excited about a lot of guys. I really want to see more of uh, Terrence Marshall. I think he's going to be real fun to watch come uh, the start of the season. Hell yeah! And he said he's at 100 percent too. He said they were easing him in during uh, OTAs, but he said he's at 100 percent now. They say. Yeah. Yes, yeah. but. But I'm you just know, hoping Cam for said that the last few years. So. Yeah. I'm just yeah. hoping that we finally have that athletic, fast, big bodied wide receiver yeah. that can go up and make a play in the end zone. Like, dude, Devin Funches, I ain't even gotta mention thirteen no more. Bro, uh, it's like that I, I'm ready for that to be in the past. Uh I love the potential that Terrence Marshall has, man. I'm I'm definitely pumped, bro. This past three days have uh, 
have a really, really uh, amped me up on, on Panther football, man. I'm ready to see some preseason football, too. Facts. Like, especially oh, yeah. for this team, I really want to know what we're going to, uh, you know, what our depth's going to be looking like. I, yeah. I got tickets to one of those games. I'm going oh, really? The, I'm going to the Ravens preseason game. Nice. Oh, that's cool, man. That's cool. I wish we had, I wish we had another preseason game with the Pats. I would have gone to that one. I went to the one last year up here in New England. Yeah. And so, uh, so real quick, uh, I wanted to – CJ has been wanting me to talk about uh, the college football thing a little bit. I don't know how many of you follow college football, mm-hmm. but he wanted me to speak a little bit about um, – one, everything going on, but one, Texas and Oklahoma, it's official. Texas and Oklahoma are going to be a part of the SEC starting in 2025. It's um, crazy. And, yeah. it, dude, it's really looking to me like you're starting to see the formation of a super conference. I kind of think that in the next few years, um, it, even my Clemson Tigers, uh, apparently the SEC has already reached out to Clemson. They've already reached out to um, – uh, a few other teams in the the Big 12 and the Big 10, uh, so I don't know. I'm 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 not necessarily attached to the old way of doing shit, so that doesn't really bother me too much. What does bother me is a 12 team playoff because I think you're gonna have a bunch of teams that don't belong, and they're ultimately gonna get ended up uh, getting preyed upon. By the teams yeah. like Clemson, Alabama, Ohio State. Uh, I mean, th- these teams are going to, I think, roll over like an undefeated uh, UCF team that they had a few years ago. Like, maybe you'll have some Cinderella stories along the way, but um, you're just you're putting these college football players through even more of a schedule and more impact on their bodies before they go to the NFL. Like, I don't know. It just seems like you're adding too much. Um, and none of it is with the intention of doing anything good for the players that are playing the football game. True. Yeah. So I don't love it. Um, it will get some of those players some shine, though. The players that yeah. we don't normally talk about because we straight watching – Clemson, Ohio State, Alabama, and whoever's other SEC team. Yeah. Right. Imagine we would got to see, like, uh, Coastal Carolina on the national stage last year. That would have been awesome. Yeah. That might have been fun, but That'd be why you how, long, fun. how long would they have lasted, you know? I mean, probably not so long. Didn't Oklahoma get blown out in the playoffs? Uh, yeah. Yeah, but that's to, like, that was tell that shoe. Yeah, well, I mean, Joe Burrow, no, no. They, they there's blowouts. Blowouts are different. different. Bro, yeah, there like see, eight touchdowns that game or something. So that guy on that team who's getting that look and getting that chance to play against NFL level talent, I mean, it can it can mean all the difference in the world. That's true. That's yeah. true. But there's and also the a ton of there's also a ton of players that will never play that kind of talent, and they'll still find their way into the NFL. Look at Khalil Mack. You know, yeah, Khalil played. Mack was playing for Buffalo. Buffalo? Yeah. yeah, he played for Buffalo. They didn't They didn't play against any top. Yeah, players. but in the flip side of that is David Moore went undrafted. Yeah. So, I mean, you're always going to have guys that slip through the cracks like that. I'm just saying it'd be, it, it, uh, it would have been uh, – I think it, it could have helped David Moore's uh, situation if we would have seen – I mean, not maybe grambling, but if we would have seen him playing some higher NFL talent. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and you know, I understand. You know, there's you'll see them against better talent and better players, but is the benefit worth the extra wear and tear on your body? Like, say you were draft eligible, and you might have been a third or fourth round pick. Maybe you're trying to bump up your stock to be like a second round pick, but then you play this extra game, and you twist your ankle, and now you're You've fallen out of being drafted completely. You're undrafted but then the first reason. thing they complain about with that transition to the NFL level is, oh, it's way more games in the NFL. So that would just nip that whole excuse in the bud. Yeah. That that and it's kind of the same argument that the players would have had transitioning from 17 to 18 games. You know, now that they have to play the extra game, that could hurt them whenever they're ready to go for their contract that they get injured. Yeah. 
you know, it's, yeah. I mean, I see your point, Cody, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. You know, you're going to figure out who's going to last and who isn't. Change and is we're still going to have some people sit out anyway. And uh, another thing about it, too, is that these uh, these broadcasting companies, like, the money's going to run out in the end because yeah. they're just going to keep on paying to uh, make all these, uh, you know, fatten these three-letter network pockets, CBS and all that shit. And, uh, you know, the, the money's going to be what leads the discussion. Bro, you better got a Kelvin Benjamin jersey on. <laughs> bro, you didn't lie, bro. At least you're consistent. Hey. This is clean, don't it? I get compliments out here in California over this. Like really? For real? Okay. <laughs> yeah, they're probably like, yeah, they're probably like, who the hell is Kelvin Benjamin? No, they know. This is the guy who looks like Anthony Anderson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how bad of a pick it was, trust me. You'd be surprised. There's actually a lot of Carolina fans. There's a lot of just football fans in general out here in Cali. Like, dude, I was even door dashing out in Oregon, and I door dashed this whole guy. He had his whole front living room was all Carolina Panthers. It's literally wow. right next to where I had some property out there. It's like oh, right next door. That's what's up, man. Dude, the Carolinas is getting thick, bro. They're getting thick, man. They're I love thick. it, man. I love and when it. you go to games. When yep. you go to get sorry to interrupt, you know, no, you go to games out here, bro. Like they they really thick out here, and and they look at my Black Panther right here. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh damn, that's a beautiful dog, man. I got a couple little pit bulls. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I feel you. I feel you. But, yeah, man, I love you know, it. Dude, there's I so love it when Panther Nation shows up, bro. Say again. My bad. No, I was just saying, I love it when Panther fans show up all over the country, man. Like, Dude, I'm, uh, I'm, it, it's, it's important for us that whenever we go, you know, whenever we're on the road, that we have loud ass fans in every stadium that we go to, man. Like, uh, you know, just because we're 25, 26 years old, whatever, we're still building that culture, man. That's what this podcast is about. By the way, if you haven't done so already, hit the like button, hit the subscribe if you're not already yeah. done that. Um. Yeah, man. Does anybody have anything else they want to add before we get up out of here? I'm probably about to about to shut this thing down. We damn near did three hours, y'all. Oh yeah. I just know I be holding it down out here in the West. Like when I I went to a Raider game, they almost kicked me out for heckling, dude. At a Raider game, <laughs> what? Me the corner, <laughs> right? Hey, me against the whole corner of the stadium. I'm just, I'm standing right over the black hole, literally. What, it, literally, one of my homies was a Raider fan next to me, and I had my girl next to me, the only other person wearing a Carolina Panther jersey. And the whole stadium was against me. They were trying to kick me out for heckling, dude. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? I hold it down when I go to these away games. I ain't, you know, I ain't no pussy. Like, motherfuckers usually just start Respect, screaming some gay bro. shit, but it's like... Hey, 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 you know what? But if, if the Raiders security... Kicked you out. That means you're doing something right in my book. <laughs> no, they didn't. That means you're doing something they kept giving right me warnings. in my book. They kept giving me warnings. I was like on two warnings and I started chilling. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm only talking to shit to people close you, to me and shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, nah, hey, man. I, like I said, I love it. Um, but hey, man, listen, uh, I, I'm going to go through real quick and let you guys plug anything if you want to. My co host. Nick Montiero, brother, he's been with me this whole time, every episode. What's going on, bro? You have anything you want to tell him about before we get up out of here? You can follow me on Instagram at Monty's Motorsports. You can see the picture of me as my profile. Uh, nothing but cars and that sort of deal. That's what I love to do in my free time. Get at me on there. I'll talk to you about anything under the sun. That's what's up, man. I appreciate it. Uh, Zach. What's going on, man? How can people find you? Uh, I'm. I don't really want to. Uh, like yeah, that's fine. Hey, but, man, uh, listen. That that's what this show is for. You can come on and plug something, or just say, "Hey, man, I came on just to chill and yeah. talk Panther football." It's man. nice that's to good. get the opportunity to talk with a bunch of people. You know? Yeah, dude. And Especially hey, man, with uh, this last year, you know, it's been hard to yeah. talk to people about football, like outside of your own like circle. It's nice to talk to a bunch of uh, new faces. Yeah, yeah, man. I, 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 dude, I definitely love. Right yeah, dude. 
I love getting, getting the chance to see all your faces and talk to you, bro. Uh, I definitely appreciate it, man. Kevin, and I forgot about you, dude. We're still going to talk about doing some kind of a college football show, bro. Yeah, man. We're going um, to make something happen. But, yeah, tell them, tell them where they can find you, man. Um, my boys, they run a, a dynasty podcast, but a fantasy football dynasty. It's called the Long Game Dynasty Podcast. It kind of got me into it and everything. Yep. Um, you can also find me on Twitter at kbosh89. I mostly just talk shit to Cody. <laughs> That's true. And, and I love talking shit with Kevin, so shout out to you, bro. Uh, Team Money. I stay talking shit to Cody, too. <laughs> hey, man. Right? In case you ain't figured it out, I love to talk me some shit, bro. I got a master's in it. Uh, but Team Money, I appreciate you coming through once again, man. Tell them where they can uh, find you online, bro. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Mr. T Money 1993, YouTube as well, Twitch. Um, and then on Facebook, I got the gaming page, uh, Mr. T Money Gaming. Uh, mostly lately, I've been playing a lot of uh, the old NCAA 14. Yeah. Um, Still, yeah, all right, all right. And that's another thing now, uh, that this NIL thing, now that they're like letting college athletes like make money off their name and likeness. Uh, it's looking like we're probably going to get another NCAA game sometime. Well, we are in, t- in two you, years from now. Already. It's two it's, years it's, from now. Oh, yeah. have they confirmed that? Yeah, yeah it's two years from now. A couple months ago. Hey, man, that's that's what's up. I know that's, yeah, uh, real. that's been something that people have been asking for for a long time. So, yeah. yeah. Ever since Cole. it stopped. Yeah, Cole, do uh, you have anything uh, – you want to put out there before we get out of here, man? Or anything you want to say? Floor is yours, uh, man. Not, oh, excuse me. <clears throat> uh, not much. Just happy to be here and talk some Panther football. I appreciate it, dude. QT Zero holding down yeah, the good West shit. Coast, bro. I want to say good coast. shit. Cold. Not that many people even got the balls to, like, you know, get up and call in on type of situations. You're a little buck, you know, doing it. Put your face out there. You know, not, you know that's what's up. It's a great start. You know, yeah. I, I appreciate you, Time man. Yeah, dude, I love doing this, man. Going on YouTube, talking well, to uh, people. I'll... Yeah, man. Hell yeah, yeah uh, pl- a... uh, plug this stuff, man. I'm, I'm going to start a little thing soon, but you know what I'm saying? More so, I just uh, I got my little next music video hopping out for about two weeks, probably about, about like the 12th of August. I should have it out. There's a peanut butter music video about to be, about to be cool. Or QT Zero on YouTube, you know what I'm saying? Or even number Sipper, you know, Instagram and all that. But we, we just, we just, uh, we over here trying to get, get things in the next level. But I'm going to have the little gamer thing and I want to do the little, little, uh, just like this too, Cody. So I'm going to need you to feature up on there for me, G, when I get this thing rolling. <laughs> bro, you already know I got you, dog. Just hit me He's up. He's rolling? Anytime, bro. Anytime. That's how I roll. You yeah. already know. Kevin knows. Good shit. But, uh, Good shit. Hey, man. I appreciate all of you. This has been another edition of the Friday Free For All, where you can come in and talk all you want about the Carolina Panthers. This is your show. If you haven't done so already, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe. We'll be back Tuesday night at 9 p.m. with the usual cast of characters. Tony Dunn, CK. Maybe Greg might pop up. You never know for another edition of the C3 Panthers podcast. My name is Cody Lashley. Until next time, keep pounding. Keep pounding. Keep pounding.